Can you all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And then I want uh, you to remain standing for our police chaplain, Bob Barnett, to give us our invocation. Lord God, we begin this evening by inviting your presence here. We're mindful of the many decisions that have been made over this year and the blessings you've bestowed. Continue to grant us favor and wisdom and success in our city. Bless our city council members. Bless our mayor. Give them wisdom and insight, Lord God, especially for the decisions this night. And give us new vision for this new year that quickly approaches. In the name of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, wait, they're bringing me one. Uh, all right, I'm going to go ahead and take one speaker on consent calendar. Alan, Wu, are you here? Yes. Mayor, I just want to remind down. you that we do have um, report and of Ryan action. Ryan Rosa Fonsai. Mayor, I do like to remind you we do have two items of reportable action. Go ahead. Okay, we'll um, let let Alan speak and we'll report out. Okay. Go ahead, Alan. I've been behaving myself, Mr. Mira, so I was hoping to get a Christmas present for the kids of Artisha Pilar uh, in, in item number 29A. Um, Councilman uh, Jose Solorio and Juan Villegas uh, was nice enough to give us a little uh, grant. That grant would go to reimburse us for an event that we had this last Saturday at uh, Romero Cruz, which had about 400 parents and kids come. And we were very surprised. We thought they would drive their cars there because we were afraid of parking. But you know, most of the parents walk there. They walk all the way from Bristol over to uh, Fairview. And that just show you the um, the needs in our community in which we're responding to. Um, uh, I'd like to also thank uh, my wife Ruby who really organized it with Trish and Mario uh, Morales and, and Luz and, and the other neighborhood leaders and also Diane Torres who is a principal over there at Romero Crew. And I want to thank you Juan and, and Jose uh, for coming out you know and supporting us. It was really important to us. Okay. And um, I know you love kids now, uh, Juan, and I know you have good plans for them, and that really means a lot to us. Um, so uh, I want to thank you guys if you would approve this grant, because it would help us to uh, pay what we already spent out of our pocket, but it also will jumpstart activities in 2019. And uh, we could, the more that we get, the more, more things that we can do. So um, I saw it. If, if that's the item I ever can talk about something else. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Alan. Now I'm going to have our city attorney, if you can uh, report anything we had in closed session. And then Ryan Rosa, if you can step forward, you'll be following Alan. Thank Sorry you, Alan. Sit back there, huh? And thank you, Mayor. We have two items of reportable action in item 1C, City of Santa Ana versus McDonald's. The City Council unanimously approved a settlement of $1.55 million for goodwill value. And the item number 1D in the matter of Rojas versus the City of Santa Ana, the City Council on a 5 to 2 vote approved a settlement of $350,000. That's all the reportable action I have. Thank you. Now uh, go ahead, Mr. Ryan. Go ahead and speak, sir. Good evening, Ma Mayor. Polito, Honorable Council Members. My name is Ryan Reza Farsai. I'm here to speak on uh, multiple items 22A, 22B, 20, 25E, 25I, 25J, 25R, 25S, and 55C and 55D. Well, basically, uh, we do have some new Honorable Council Members up there this evening from the last time I was here. I just wanted to bring to your attention that I did uh, bring bring it to the attention of many cities starting on November 27th. I started at 10 a.m. in Los Angeles. I spoke in public comment and then I went ahead to the city of Beverly Hills, California, and then Diamond Bar, California, Fullerton, California, Santa Ana, California. 
I walked into the city council meeting and spoke again in the city of Mission Viejo, California, handed the documents to the city clerk, and also went again and spoke in the city of Newport Beach that evening and handed the documents to the city of Newport Beach clerk. I also went ahead the following week, I went to Oregon, and I handed this document to the city clerk in the city of Portland and the city clerk in the city of Salem, Oregon. The next day I drove up, I actually spent the night in Seattle, I handed it to the city clerk in Seattle and the city clerk in Olympia, Washington. So I hit up six counties and three states. And what am I asking is the same thing I'm asking what I've been asking for the last few months. What is these cities doing with our money? How much are they putting in form of debts in our backs? Are these debts bonded? What are these debts supposed to be paid off, ladies and gentlemen? This is very important about America. What's happening is that some of these cities have a runaway checkbook and they have no attention of balancing their budget. I hope you new honorable gentlemen and lady who got up there do a better job than your predecessors because they were up there 12 years and they were not able to balance nothing, David. They didn't balance anything. So this is the problem with America. We haven't had anyone balance the budget for 50 years since Richard Nixon. I hope that this is coming to an end soon and we're going to find a way to come out of this hole. Thank you for my time and consideration. Basically, my ongoing concern is how are we spending this money and what what, what are we taking in terms of an initiative to budget our future? Thank you. All right, I'm now going to take something out of order. I know we have several nominees that are going to be sworn in. And what I want is to turn things over to the city clerk right now and let's get uh, those folks taken care of so they can go home. We actually need to confirm their appointments first, so let's I need do a that. vote um, for items 13 a b and c all right i would entertain a motion on those items confirming appointees is there a motion second okay we have a motion and a second both your first motions a solid second before yes. the first yes it's okay no worries be down we're doing well so those in favor please say aye aye those opposed motion carries unanimously please madam clerk go ahead great if i can please have everlina oliver Mike Tardif, Nancy Sandoval Baylon, Chris Schmidt, Stephen Wen, Angie Cano, Angie Gomez, and R. Pedrosa, if you're present, if you can please join me um, up here, please. Nancy Sandoval Bailon, Angie Gomez, Evelina Oliver, Stephen Wynn, Mike Tardif, Art Pedroza, to solemnly swear, swear to, to support and defend the Constitution, the Constitution of the United States, States and the, the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservations, 
our purpose of evasion. And I will. And faithfully discharge the duties which I am about to enter. Thank you. Before we start, I just want to thank Mayor Pro Tem Villegas because um, he's already taken care of me. Somebody swapped my seat, and it keeps going lower and lower and lower. So he gave me his, which is a little, high, a little, little taller, and he's a little taller than I am. But uh, hopefully, we'll get him a higher seat here in a moment. But if you wonder why we're making, playing musical chairs, that's what's been going on. We're trying to. Let's see how this one works. For whatever reason, the city attorney's chair looks pretty comfortable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's... All right. He found one that works. Uh, let's go on to the consent calendar. Um, I would like uh, on item 19F to request a 30-day continuance. I don't know if we take that as a separate item, Madam Clerk. All right, so on, on 19F, I'd entertain a motion for a 30-day continuance, second. please. Okay, we have a motion by um, Peñalosa, second by uh, Sarmiento. Those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Aye, those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. There was one loud aye by our Mayor Pro Tem. Um, now, any other items that people wish to pull? Mayor Pro Tem? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to pull 25C. 25C. Council Member Iglesias, which one do you want to pull? I have a couple. I mean, I just have quick questions. So it's 25A, 22A. Um, let's see. 25O, 25P, and 25Q. All right. So I, any other items? If not, I would entertain a motion on the balance. Mr. 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 Mayor, uh, yes, go ahead. I'm not sure if this one was mentioned, but uh, I do want to pull item 25N. N is in Nancy. Nancy. Yes. All right, so let's do that. We have a motion on the balance by um, Councilmember Vince Sarmiento. Is there a second on the balance? Second. second. We have two seconds. The clerk can choose. Okay. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Now I believe Councilmember Iglesias. I think she had the first items that she pulled. This I'll is trade you two pens. For 22A, um, it talks about the purchase of equipment and services, which is uh, to award purchase order. I don't know if you can hear me. To um, Los Angeles Truck Center for two compressed natural gas crane trucks. And it, it seems that we only had one bid. And, uh, and it's for the amount for two trucks. It's six, is it $683,000. So I'm just wondering if um, if the 683,000 so will be about what um, 341,000 each um, crane is that a going price for these type of vehicles or equipment? Because that's something that wasn't clear on the um, on the agenda. Councilmember Glisses, if I can have our public works director <coughs> respond to that, or actually, can you speak up, please? If I can have our uh, 
Fleet and Facilities Manager uh, respond to that? Mr. John Aguilar. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Uh, I have Steve McHugh here, who's also the Fleet Supervisor. The items in question on 22A are for the Clean Air Energy. They're part of our green initiative, mm -hmm. and the cost is accurate for alternate fuel and CNG. So, it, but is, is that the going rate of the of the um, vehicles? Yes, ma'am. Three hundred and forty-one thousand each. Yes, it is. That is correct. Okay. So for for future, those are the kind of questions that I'll be asking. So um, you know, for staff, if you guys can provide that as backup documentation, that'd be great. So you would have to. Yeah. Okay. So that's the going rate for all the cars. That is, and for your edification, the council's edification, we have a long-term plan for our green initiative, and CARB, California Air Resource Board, requires us to take vehicles off the road when they've exceeded their life because they're polluters. Okay. So we do have a plan for all these vehicles, and those two were part of that plan. Okay. Okay. So, Thank you. Thank you. All right. I would entertain a motion on this item. Move it. Second. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Next item. So yeah, so this is a, um, oh yeah, this is the, the one that we're having a, to change the term of the agreement with PlaceWorks to provide an environmental assessment. And I believe this is for the, um, the Rancho Santiago Community College Center at Centennial Park. Is, is that correct? I'm understanding it correctly? Is that is course? correct. Okay. So I know that here it talks about um, being, and the more in the backup documentation I think was a staff report that talked about the, it was a, like a, the land acquisition was like 2.6 acres, I, I believe of where uh, Ranch Santiago Community College has their continuing education center. And, uh, but, but then we said that we would, I guess, swap it with the other, provide more land for three parks if I'm not mistaken, which was um, the, rail, the Pacific one on McFadden. Correct. And then there's one like on Lacey. Uh, I don't Sixth know and Lacey. Sixth and Lacey, and then the one on Rate. Rate and Myrtle. Correct. Okay. So um, my question for you would be, uh, and then I know that's at that, the amount of that um, land was like about 2.89, I guess, the one that we're getting in, um, I guess, as a Land conversion. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. So my question is, because I live on that side of town, and... Uh, the parking structure for um, for Ranch Santiago San Community College is that was that included the, the not the structure I'm sorry but the parking lot was that included as part of the um, square footage or uh, or anything to do the assessment for the national parks um, no no so then how much would it be in total square footage if we were to include the parking to um, so we, uh, for me, it would be more like to see like a true assessment on how much we're really giving up as a community to right. Ranch Santiago Community College because it's pretty big. And then also uh, there's also a, um, I would say kind of like a staff parking behind, I think the child care center is at, like between the baseball field. Mm -hmm. That too is used by Ranch Santiago Community College staff. So is that part of also the assessment of th that they're um, inquiring about the, the land swap too? Right. Um, Council Member Iglesias, uh, Lisa Rudloff, um, Executive Director of Parks, Recreation, and Community Services. Thank you for understanding. This is my eighth week, and I need to call Ron Ono. Uh, I'm not sure of the uh, parking um, size, and I'd like to call him up to answer that question. Looks like I have a fan in the audience here. <laughs> um, to answer your question, the parking lot uh, north of the college and also south of the college was not included in the 2.6 acre okay. allocation. Uh, the acreage, I'm not quite sure, but it, it looks like it's around uh, close to a little under two acres if you included both, both parking lots uh, that would be impacted. The net, we submitted the information to the National Park Service and uh, they are currently reviewing the documents. Mm -hmm. They haven't made a determination yet if the, the parking impact uh, would be required as one of the land conversion items. They did indicate that uh, in our report to them that the, um, that the use of that parking lot by the college doesn't impact the use of uh, the parking for the park sites. There's still available parking areas for the park site. 
um, because when we go there, we see it full. Then it's mostly for the students of that center. So it's really not, ex even though it is, ex um, it is kind of like um, first come, first serve in a way. So the ones that are there, it's mostly the students. So it doesn't really give a benefit to the broader community. So I'm just wondering if why, why isn't it included when they do the entire assessment, not just the buildings themselves? Yeah, and that question has been asked, um, and, uh, and that's why the National Park Service asked us to do a parking analysis, uh, to include that parking lot. Okay. We have done that, uh, PlaceWork has done that analysis along with the Recreation uh, Valley Report. Uh, both documents have been submitted to the National Park Service. They are currently reviewing it, okay. and um, as I indicated earlier, uh, they haven't made a determination at this point. They indicated to me verbally that they hope to give us some uh, some indication uh, sometime uh, by the, the, either the end of this month or early next month. Okay. And then another question I have, and I don't know if this is something that you can answer. I know that uh, since it's most, it's kind of like a joint use in a way, kind of like their Rancho Santiago is leasing it from us, right? But how much is it that they're paying for that property to the city? Just rough numbers. I don't know if you have that. What percentage are we charging them to use that center? The, you're talking about the, what the college is paying the yes. city? Mm -hmm. the, and the college currently pays to the city 7.4% uh, of the operational and maintenance costs of the common space of the park site. And uh, that that equals to let me uh, that equals to approximately thirty three thousand dollars annually. Twenty three thousand. Twenty three thousand. I mean, I'm thirty three thirty three thousand annually. And how much does it really cost to maintain it? Uh, I'm I'm not sure what the total cost is to maintain that parking lot, but uh, uh, but the total cost of to maintain the park site is is calculated and, and it fluctuates based on what we spend every year on the maintenance of that park site. And that's why I indicated it's an average and it's, that's why it's uh, identified as a percentage in but the if, agreement. If you could burn, if, especially for me, it would be good to understand how much it is that we're, as a city, we're investing to maintain, you know, that side of the park. And then if they're only giving us 7 point or 8% um, of that cost, then it's. I just want. I just want to see where where the fair trade off is, and then my understanding is that the railroad park, the one on McFadden, uh -huh. um, who is because I, I believe that's also part of this agreement, right? So who ma who maintains that park? Oh, the city does. The city. We don't get any contributions or anything from the college. No. Okay. So how how much does it cost to maintain that? Park. I'll, I'll have to get to you uh, that information uh, later because we have the cost to maintain all our park sites individually and as well as told, but I don't have that particular cost for that site yet. Okay. Thank okay. you, Juan. Uh -huh. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Sarmiento, you have a question on that same item? Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. And um, just a couple of quick questions. Good to see you, Ron, by the way. You're looking young as usual. You got to tell give us your secret. So. Um, <laughs> So is, is the multi-level parking structure, uh, to the council member's point, to council member Iglesias' point, is there any exclusivity on that? I mean, is it some, somehow restricted for the use of just those at um, the college or those taking uh, classes there? Or what's the purpose? No, the multi-use parking structure that was built uh, by the San Unified School District, uh, that one is under our joint use agreement. It's about 500 plus uh, stalls in that. And by the way, that uh, structure, the count of that structure, even though we have use of that stall for programs and events, and uh, was not included in the count uh, for the, um, uh, the land exchange because it, the college does not impact that particular structure. How far is it from the college site or where the classrooms are? Boy, that's... It's pretty, I mean, it's, it's on the other side it's of the It's on park, the other right? side of the lake, so it's, it's pretty difficult uh, to get to. So, so the, the, the students or those attending the, the, the classes on the campus are normally parking in the surface street lot, which is directly in front of the campus. That's right? correct. Okay. Um, and the Pacific Electric Park, in addition to some of these other sites, were those acquired with funds through this 
land land swap or land exchange uh, through, through the MPS? Uh, well, no, the, no, it's the Pacific Electric Park and the other park sites. Uh, the city purchased those sites as part of the agreement to do the land exchange, right. uh, and uh, we submitted those sites uh, to the National Park Service to make sure that those sites are acceptable as equal uh, uh, value as far as uh, 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 land appraised value and equal size and equal recreational value. That's why we're doing all these reports that's necessary to submit to the National Park Service so they can make a determination. Uh, that it's an equal exchange. So that's the purpose of the item before us tonight is to do the environmental assessment so we could report back to the National Park Service that these, it, we couldn't find really a, a, a space that was equivalent in size to the 2.6 and so that's why we have these multiple spaces that turned into, um, uh, for lack of a better word, smaller parks or mini parks that, that we have now throughout the city. Yeah, that's, that's correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there another, um, any more comment on this item, 25A? No, I'll just make a comment, then I, 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 I will Council make a motion we haven't made already. But this has been an ongoing partnership that we've had with uh, Ranch Santiago Community College District, and it's, you know, largely to educate parents, many of them, you know, immigrants who are trying to learn English or get their citizenship degree. Uh, the vast majority are local, you know, Santa Ana residents, uh, people know that that campus is there, and maybe at some point we could change around formulas and whatnot, but I think with respect to just, you know, like for like land and dealing with the federal government, I, I think we are moving in the right process, and I know there'll be m m more steps and you know, questions of reimbursements and formulas. I think maybe once we kind of sort out all the things with the feds, we can, you know, revisit, you know, our relationship with uh, with uh, Rancho and Santa Ana College. But well, with that, I want to thank the staff for putting this together and uh, would like to make a motion in support. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Madam Clerk, which is the uh, next item? 25C. 25C. Can I have uh, uh, Deputy Chief Kaminsky uh, speak to 25C for us, please? Yes, sir. What we're talking about with 25C is the CopLogic Solutions online police report system. <coughs> this is a maintenance agreement. It deals specifically with the e-police reporting software that we have online. That e-police suite uh, we found is not as user-friendly as we would like to see it. Uh, we have been talking with the vendor. The vendor is going to be making some alterations to it. We're also going to be adding uh, additional language opportunities within that e-reporting system. It is challenging with the uh, alternate language uh, when you talk about adding narratives to police reports because we'll then have to go back and have those transcribed. However, uh, we are looking to uh, see what that can bring. Additionally, we're looking to continue with the maintenance on uh, the, the system that allows us to have attorneys contact the record section, which is already understaffed, and then electronically request police reports uh, so that uh, we can have those processed electronically and we don't get caught with a whole bunch of paper, more than we already have. Thank you, sir. So it sounds pretty promising. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deputy Chief. So can I get a motion to approve? Move the item. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. I'm going to move on to the business calendar. Item 55. Yeah, not yet. We I still think there's have a few some more. consent calendar items. Oh, we have what? 25N. Oh, N as in Nancy. That's uh, Councilmember Solorio. Councilmember Solorio. My yes. Apologies. Uh, this, this item deals with our solid waste agreement with uh, waste management and uh, two, two laws in particular, AB 1822, I mean 1826. Looks like the state has notified us that we're out of compliance uh, a little bit, so this is an effort to get us back in compliance. So staff was helpful in providing me additional information, and uh, maybe they can just come up and correct me if, 
if, if my understanding is wrong. But I, I, I think that the situation here, even though we could say, well, maybe it was some, a shortcoming of staff or the contractor, I think my council colleagues that were here prior know that on the uh, bid for new waste services, that's been delayed substantially. Uh, probably close to two years realistically, I bet, is, is what that is. And so I think some of the changes and recommendations proposed here would have been addressed earlier through that other process, but we haven't really been in a position to do that, so we're addressing it this way. There is a, a, a cost to the city, but I think, uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, these types of contracts are also passed through contracts, and so uh, I think it is... Uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's a band-aid, but it also just should put focus back on the council that there are other things in the broader waste services contract that if we don't sooner than later do a new contract, there will be other things that we might fall out of compliance with, and costs can be substantial. Like on this, if we don't fix this proper problem accordingly, we're looking at fines of up to $10,000 per day. And so that adds up real quick. Uh, so I do appreciate staff bring this uh, forward even earlier would have been better but uh, staff was very good in providing the information for backup that, that I wanted and so I do think it's a it's a fair resolution thank you thank, thank you. you and with that I'd like to move the item those in favor please say aye aye aye, aye. those opposed the motion carries I believe the next item madam clerk and who had that one okay just to understand the um, the agreement this is with the care ambulance services and it states the amount being is it 22 million that it is that we're authorizing <clears throat> or is it um, if, if I put all the amounts together like the 17 million the 12 million it comes up to like 252 million I mean what's what's the number that we're looking at right now thank you uh, Catherine Downs director executive director of finance and management services um, the initial five-year term would be what you are approving tonight is uh, 22.9 million if the options are exercised the first option would be worth another 17 million and the uh, second option would be worth another 12.5 million those do require um, a, a action to uh, exercise those options and if those options are exercised then you would have a total of 10 years of service for a total contract price of 52.5 million for 10 years so then if we divide it up in 10 years so it's actually like roughly averages it out like to 5 million per year as an average it starts out at 4.4 million for the first full fiscal year okay and just for uh, transparency purposes, do we get um, like a monthly report from them, yearly report? I mean, how do we go about uh, seeing what we're paying for? Uh, let me uh, have some assistance from one of my staff. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Will Holt is our treasury manager and uh, he, he uh, has a better hand on managing this contract. Okay. Good evening, uh, Council Members, uh, Council Member Iglesias. So <clears throat> within the contract, we have the right to a variety of reporting. This is something that can be customized. Um, we take advice from the Orange County Fire Authority into the nature of this information. Um, also, uh, as an aside, in addition to this uh, ambulance contract, the city retains the right for the billing of the services. So we have a vendor, uh, Whitman Enterprises, that performs the billing. And we get from them a monthly report in addition. And it goes into very great detail. Um, since they are the billing agent, um, that is a, a regular source for us to also kind of verify the information we're getting in regards to care. So I think we're in a very strong position informationally. Okay. Uh, and we do monitor this. Uh, the Orange County Fire Authority um, is <clears throat> one of the agencies we have to confer with when we approve an extension of the agreement. Okay. So it's not done solo. It's done in concert with them. Um, I can say that they have been very approving of care as the incumbent provider. And we're hoping that that will continue as it goes forward 
into the future, but this is a large contract and we will monitor it very closely. Okay. Thank you. A motion? I got a question. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, myself, I'm not necessarily always in favor of, of long-term contracts. There's so many variables that come into play and so mm -hmm. many different things, and so I'm, I'm a little concerned. And, uh, if I read it correctly, it says uh, the initial one five-year with two, two three-year terms coming down the pipe. So a total of 11 years? No, it's a, it's a five-year plus a three-year and then a two-year for a total of for 10. A total of 10. And the reason for the length is you've got to, to get really good competitive bidding, um, you have to have a long enough contract for the amortization of vehicles, uh, for the hiring of the staff and the training of the EMTs and all the rest of this. The original contract we had, which began, um, I believe, April 12th, uh, 2012, was on an emergency basis. And so um, while there were, was a two-part um, RFP that was done, uh, the thought at the time was not to try to lay out a 10-year contract right out of the gate, but to do something for a shorter period of time. So this has been our first opportunity to really evaluate and take a look at the benefits of having a longer contract. But that is at the discretion of the City Council. Sure. So we, if we go forward five years and uh, we're not satisfied, then we won't be extending this agreement. So the extension will come back to us whether we're exact, happy well, with the process a, or not? Yeah, there, there's an ability for staff to, when I say staff, the, the city manager and the clerk of the city council to approve the extensions. Um, but that's only on the approval of the Orange County Fire Authority. Um, so anything less than that would cause us to come back, I'm sure, to the city council and perhaps go out again to uh, RFP. All right. Thank you. You're very welcome. Any other questions? Uh, Councilor Sarmiento? So, um, so thank you for the presentation and thank you for, uh, for addressing a lot of the questions. It looks like um, 147 vendors were notified about, this, um, about the contract um, and we had 10 vendors download it and we ultimately only had two vendors that competed for this. Sure, one being the incumbent vendor, the other one being, I believe... Doctors Ambulance. Doctors. And so... It looks like there's, you know, the, the benefit of care is that we have some history with them and we were mm -hmm. able to evaluate their response time. And, you know, this is such a critical service that it is. we obviously used to, this used to be uh, something done in-house because we had our, you know, our, our department oh. and then we also work with, um, with, with contractors. But it is such a critical service that we provide to our residents that um, I really, you know, I, I mean, there was a robust outreach effort, it appears. But any, uh, you know, thoughts on why uh, only two? Why only two, yes. Oh, well, I, really I, only one. Well, because well no, look, there were two, interest. and they were competitive. Um, so you can, if you take a look in the um, RFCA, you'll see the scoring of the points. So this was a relatively competitive comparison. But the nature of the service is such as there's a large infrastructure of vehicles, the staging of the vehicles and what whatnot that is required. Um, and so it is geographic and territorial as well. So yes, an incumbent that also is providing services locally uh, to other providers has some advantages that are just built in that allow them to bid more strongly financially. So in this evaluation, uh, with the exception of one single criteria where both bidders tied, um, care uh, was evaluated as being superior in each one of the criteria. Um, now, not by huge percentages or huge number of points, because this has reduced two points to a 500-point system. Um, but, for example, if you take a look at the financial end of it, and the City Council specifically asked us in this contract to add that element, uh, that, uh, you know, CARE received 100% of the points and uh, Doctors Ambulance 67 uh, and this had to do just with the financial nature of the bidding. So uh, it's very difficult when you have limited number of potential competitors. Yes, there were 149 um, parties informed. Uh, we used Planet Bid, and there were 10 downloads. But when you take a look at who can compete, there are natural um, restraints in regards to that. Someone who does not have physical continuity with the boundaries of the city of Santa Ana 
is going to face larger costs to stage their operations. And uh, so that, that is in the nature of the beast. Thank you, Will. And, and I recall when we first um, contracted with CARE, mm -hmm. I remember there was some discussion that they, you know, this is such a large contract, this is such a large part of their service delivery area because of our city, the city of um, size. Did they have a sub headquarters here, or didn't we request that of them? So they, and, well, and so to the extent yes. That, give, give me one second. Mm -hmm. To the extent that this is such a large contract, and it is, you know, to my colleague's point, an extensive contract because we're front loading it five years and then having the renewals thereafter, wouldn't it be something, and maybe this is something I, you know, I think we, you know, we'd like to have you and, and the staff do and Mr. City Manager to consider in the future when we do contract with our vendors for such a long period of time, for such a long, for such a large amount, um, look, we should require them to have at least a presence here. And I know Waste Management was here uh, a little while ago. They used to have a presence here because their contract, you know, has been with us for a number of years. But that's what I think is a good practice for us to at least invite them. And I know that we made that overture to them. So I hope they had a good reason. They, they actually do have uh, a presence. And they have multiple locations they stage from. Uh, so while their primary headquarters lies in the city of Orange, they definitely have presence in the city of Santa Ana. They're paying business license taxes at multiple locations. Um, so you're right. That was something that was discussed originally. That was a concession uh, that they made previously under the contract. They've maintained it. Um, and it would have been something that Doctors Ambulance would have had to have stepped up to. And, uh, you know, they made an attempt in their uh, proposal. So, again, it was a competitive bidding situation. Doctors Ambulance, um, you know, competed very strongly. But there are natural advantages. And CARE's record uh, has been peerless. Um, so the rating came out the way that it did, and I think it was very fairly organized and done. I can assure you. Thanks, Will. You're welcome. All right. So uh, I believe do we enter? Do we need a motion, or we have one on the item? Move the item. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye those opposed. Motion carries. What's? Uh, are we done with the consent? And who had that? Okay. So just um, a question, just to understand the uh, maintenance cost of um, using, the, I guess, the joint use, and we're pretty much um, swapping, I guess, responsibilities on, our, on the land that we have. Um, how much does it cost to maintain Angels Park? Uh, I'll have to get back to you okay. on that. I don't know that we have. I know that we maintain um, Angels Park during our time. Uh, and the tennis courts, and then the school district, after their use, they maintain uh, both sites. Uh, but I can get back to you uh, with the amount of money it costs us to maintain that park. And so we get uh, money from the district to maintain Angels Park? Is no. No. It's a, it's a, it's a no-cost um, okay. um, agreement. Okay. So, um, so we pay um, utilities for... Um, Angels Park and the Neil Machander Tennis Center. Correct. And the reason we do that is because we use the tennis center lights at night. Is that correct? Okay. Okay. So there's so then we're just responsible for the use that we give it. Is is that my understanding or is that wrong? So like you're saying, because Angels Park is nowhere near Santa Ana High School. And I know the tennis court, right? Is that what we're talking about? I mean correct. they use it for their games, for their tournaments, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering how much does it cost to maintain Angels Park versus how much does it cost to maintain um, the tennis, uh, courts. tennis courts. Is that something that it's a fair swap? That's pretty much my concern. Okay. So yeah. So that, that, that pretty much that's my comment. So I, I would like to know how much it, it, it cost. And so, but yeah, we have you know, it, it is a good use for our community, so I'm in agreement with it, but I just want to know how much it costs us as a city okay. to um, be able to do that um, type of operations. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. So I believe a motion and a second on this is needed. I'd entertain one. Motion to approve. We have a motion and a second. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. 
now we're through the one more okay go ahead I promise the next ones won't be as long but I just um for this one for the downtown downtown Inc I just um, this is authorized city manager and the clerk of the council to execute first amendments to the downtown merchandise fund operating agreements in the amount of 200,000 so it's 100,000 per organization so are those the only two organizations that could provide this type of service or is it something that's already been agreed by the city to only have certain members of our community be able to provide the services those are the only two that we currently contract with to manage the downtown functions and each are awarded a thousand a hundred thousand dollars a year um, the reason the amendment is before you because uh, we're asking for additional hundred thousand for next year okay. so we have to amend the date and the amount in the agreements okay. so a hundred thousand dollars that covers what the hundred thousand dollars covers a, a numerous from marketing to outreach to special events and their own management cost for their administrative staff Okay, so do we have any do we have any oversight from the city to sit on these um, committees to make sure that there is a um, that they're complying with what they're supposed to be complying with? We do. We have our economic development team, including our downtown liaison Julie Castro, that monitors them and works with them constantly. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Just one question, Mr. Go Mr. ahead, Mayor. please. So, um, thanks, Stephen. Thanks You're for welcome. standing up there and not sitting down. So I, I see that um, both budgets, and I'm glad representatives from both organizations are here, and I think for the most part everything um, you know, is, is, is going well, and I know that um, both organizations, to my understanding, work well together, right? So that's important, that there's cohesiveness, even though there, there are two disparate organizations. They still communicate with one another, that hopefully there's um, uh, you know, some mutual sharing of calendars and things that are going on so so it's more of a compliment rather than sort of a you know segregated um, uh, you know downtown but I do see that the personnel cost for both is about you know when you combine the two um, about 50,000 right of that um, you know of the total budget so is it our staff or whose staff are we talking no, about? No, it's actually um, their staff members who are actually sitting next to each other so that's a good sign that they're not on opposite right. sides of the room sitting right next to each other both Madeline and Ryan are here tonight okay. and what's why is there a disparity between one uh, personnel cost which appears to be 18,000 the other personnel cost is 42 so is, is it just one's more top-heavy on the on the administrative no um, Ryan could you come up and address that thanks we'll have Ryan address that only because he's in the front seat Madeline he's, he's closer <laughs> Ryan and we actually carpooled together too so it's a really good sign <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so the merchant fund is a supplemental budget that's provided through the parking revenue. So every year, uh, piece, the parking revenue that is generated downtown stays in downtown and funds a bunch of different programs like our community-oriented policing. And one of those programs is this merchant fund. So this is a supplement to our other budget, which comes from business license taxes in the downtown. So how we split our budgets between those two budgets is different so they have uh, other finance uh, employee costs in their bid budget whereas we split ours evenly across the two budget so that's where you see the real disparity all right yeah because the uh, line items for both just don't seem to match up well so that was my only concern maybe one staff is thinner than the other or maybe somebody's got a good secret on how they can be real lean um, but um, okay thank you for taking that question Thanks, Stephen. You're welcome. Thank you very much. And have a happy holiday. Likewise. Thank you. I believe uh, we have a mo we need a motion to sit on this one. Motion. Item. We have a motion to second. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye those opposed, motion carries. Now we go on to our business calendar. Item uh, 55A, I would entertain a motion. Motion approved. Second. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 This was motion carries. 55B, I would entertain a motion. Move the item. I'll second it. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 This was motion carries. 55C. I have a comment. Uh, please go ahead. Point. Yes, uh, this is an item that was uh, continued previously. I do want to thank uh, the. Uh, 
personnel, Director, Mr. Fan, for addressing the concern that I have had, which was, you know, we don't want to add additional responsibilities onto employees without making uh, just changes to their job classifications or salary ranges. And so I, I'm appreciative of the additional review and would like to move this item. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. 55D is in David. Uh, we have uh, two speakers. Uh, Kendall uh, Gag Gaglio, or Gag Gaglio in Italian, I believe, and Carla Duane. No, Mr. Kendall Mayor, is from Bird. Carla is from uh, Lyme. Mr. Mayor, I, I might suggest because staff did... Uh, Put some information together to hear. Do you want a brief staff, staff uh, flood? Do you want to give us a recommendation or a presentation, please? It's just like a two, three. Uh, Do we have a scooter so you can ride back and forth here around up and down the aisle? The, the, com the competing scooters, one bird and one line. Well, we'll have a race and see who wins. You might both uh, crash. We, have, we have them at the uh, corporation yard, actually. <laughs> Bring the mic down. Sure. We do have a brief presentation. Okay, please. Good evening, Mayor and members of the City Council. William Galvez, City Engineer. And we just have a couple of slides for you to look at. Uh, first off, what is micromobility? And I think a picture is worth a thousand words, as you'll appreciate this picture here. Uh, what we're trying to do is uh, we're looking at highly dense urban areas that operate much different than suburban areas. And we think micromobility, which is code word for uh, scooters and, and shared bicycle use, we believe that uh, we want to try a pilot program for about 90 days so that we see how micromobility might help the city. We are also uh, looking forward to capturing a lot of the data. Because micromobility works uh, using high-tech uh, uh, mobile apps that you can reserve the, the scooter, and then you can pay for the scooter using this app, uh, the city is in great position to actually get a lot of this data. And what we're hoping to do is to figure out where all these mobility nodes are at, you know, wh where folks are in the downtown area. Are they connecting to the Santa Ana College? Are they connecting to some of the other park uh, locations in the city? And that way we can help plan out into the future better uh, mobility for the city in general. Through this 90-day pilot program, we're also hoping to to figure out how to best manage these kinds of uh, systems. So the 90-day pilot program is going to help us uh, uh, learn how to operate into the future, and also it's going to capture data that's going to be very, very beneficial to, to uh, mobility in the city. Um, so this really concludes the, uh, the presentation. I just wanted to offer that there are some deal points in the uh, presentation. Uh, essentially, we have uh, requirements of the uh, mobility operators, such as Lime and Bird. We also have some guidelines for the actual rider of the scooter. And then, of course, we have some liability requirements uh, to ensure that the city doesn't uh, get uh, uh, exposed uh, for a... a, a risk and so we work that through the uh, city attorney's office so if you have any questions I'd be happy to answer those and if I may add yeah. scooters started oh, yeah. scooters started uh, popping up in large cities such as San Francisco and LA about a year ago and uh, you know they could, they're supposed to help you know in improve mobility in downtown areas the uh, city of Santa Ana will be the first city to implement the scooter program in Orange County. So, and we're looking forward to gathering more data and make mobility in the city much easier for many uh, people you know, and businesses here. And um, as uh, William said, we're offering this pilot program to allow two of the largest scooter companies to come and operate here in Santa Ana. Each company will provide about 500 scooters and then we'll study how, you know, this will improve mobility and get, uh, you know, how we can use the data that will, you know, gather from these uh, two operators. Thank you. All right. We have uh, Councilman Roman Reyna. 
Uh, I love the concept. Definitely creative, thinking out of the box. Uh, and I'm sure anytime we do a pilot program, there's going to be some challenges. You know, I, I've seen in other parts of the country they have something similar with the bicycles, which are which are very uh, uh, useful and helpful. Uh, but I notice here that, that it says they must be wearing a helmet. So that raises a couple of questions: as are we going to store helmets? Are we going to have helmets there? What's the safety issue about somebody having lice and moving it from one to another? Uh, so I have a little concern with that. So uh, basically, the to use a scooter, a user has to add the app on their uh, mobile phone. And then they have to read the use agreement and abide by, you know, its conditions. Uh, the scooter company will be providing free helmets at different locations throughout the city. So a person who wants to use a helmet can get one from, you know, various uh, locations. Yes. Interesting. I'm looking, for, looking forward to seeing how it progresses. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Now, uh, Councilor Ceci Iglesias, please. So what's the initial cost to the city to <laughs> Sorry, tell me zero? Well, there is no initial cost okay. to the city. We will be charging each operator about a permit fee, about $1,200 uh, a year. Okay. Uh, the people who will be using the scooter will have, of course, to pay. I believe it's uh, $1 to unlock the scooter, and then there is a cost per mile or per minute, about 15 to 20 cents. But there is no cost to the city. Okay, so then how about for, you know, everything's insurance, everything's liability. What, when they rent these scooters, does the insurance come, say they bump into something, they break something? I mean, how, do you, how would you handle that? Each uh, company, each mm -hmm. scooter company, will have to indemnify the city okay. for, you know, the use within the city. So, you know, our city attorney reviewed the conditions of the pilot program, and we believe we will be protected, you know, against uh, any lawsuits or, you know, mishaps if something happens. Um, because there's, so is there going to be a, um, just a certain, I guess, section of the city that they can use this, or they can they go citywide using this? Just to try, I'm just trying to understand the concept. These scooters are very useful within downtown districts. Okay. Uh, it's going to be up to each company where to distribute those, but people can take them anywhere they want. Uh, because other cities surrounding us, they have, you know, they have not approved it, uh, a scooter can go you know, across the borders, but it cannot be used from another city going back into the uh, city of Santa Ana. The scooters will be picked up almost on a daily basis by either the company or certain people who also want to make some money, but yeah, they'll pick them up, charge them at night, and then provide them at different locations. Will they be using the, um, the same, I guess, like, you know, like the bike um, lanes that, they have, that they've already installed in the city? Are those yes. the ones that they'll it, be using? The, the ideal uh, place to use these scooters is in the bike lane. Okay. And, uh, you know, it also, the, the use ag agreement that a user will have to abide by is to use them on the street, not on the sidewalk. And this is what we also listed in our conditions of use. Because I'm concerned because there are places in the city where we have the bike lanes, but there's also, like, potholes. Yes. I mean, they're riding the scooter, and then, so you're saying there's no liability to the city, but what would happen in that instance? So if there's a pothole, something happens, they fly, and so is that the insurance from the carrier that would cover it, or would that be a city liability? Yes. Well, we, we looked at uh, uh, model ordinances from other cities, and we looked at conditions imposed by other cities. We tried to, you know, uh, uh, use, you know, um, regulations that are already adopted by other cities, and that's the purpose of the pilot program. We're going to run it and see how, you know, things go, and then draft our final, you know, ordinance and change our municipal code in order to allow these if they turn out to be beneficial. Okay. So it's, it's a pilot program for about uh, two and a half months, but will give us a lot of information and data to make sure that we implement something that will protect everybody that uses, you know, the right of way, whether sidewalks, streets, you know, cars, bicycles, and so forth. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Solorio, please. Do you want to go first? Do you want to speak as well? Yeah, uh, go ahead. Go first. Go yeah. ahead. Um, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to, uh, you know, voice my my support for the micro mobility programs that are operating countrywide. I've been to numerous cities across the country where I've used them myself. 
the bikes, the scooters. And um, it's, you know, we went to New Orleans, rented a car, and the car sat in the driveway for the whole week because we were using these bikes that we were renting across the street. Uh, the only concerns that I have of them operating in our, in our city is uh, liability uh, with the city and, and who, who's responsible for, for these uses. Because when I went through the app, I don't think there was a terms and conditions uh, part. I might have missed it. Um, or just agreed to it without even seeing it. But um, that, that's one concern. The other concern is I've just, I saw some yesterday in downtown, in our downtown area. Um, a lot of them were missing. The little bells, the labels were ripped off. Um, I know that we, we have a, a large homeless population in the city and they're very crafty. Um, so these scooters, you know, to looking out for bird and lime, you know, they will get stolen, taken apart. They'll find a way to, to for whatever reason, you know, I, I, I think that's something that needs to take, be taken into consideration as well. And um, I think I, I mean, that was it for now, but, you know, it was just, uh, it's a direction we're moving in uh, with, in regards to transportation. We don't want to be left behind. Every city, you know, if we don't do it, the next city over is going to do it and adopt it. And uh, so I thank staff for, for, for uh, going the nine-day pilot route and see how it works out, but these are things that we should take into consideration uh, for the safety of the user and, you know, the, the nuisance problem that would come with it, with, uh, with uh, people stealing them or ripping them apart for parts. Yes. You know, of course, there is no perfect, you know, solution. There will definitely be certain situations where will people, people will, you know, even misuse them or throw them on the sidewalk instead of leaving them standing in a safe place in order not to block sidewalks. I believe the program have a rating for each user, and if a user keeps abusing or not following the scooter etiquette, like they call it, then they will be banned from using it. So that's, I think that's something also already included in the program. The, the thing was that, you know, I was able to operate the scooter without unlocking it with the app by just pedaling. Um, I'm not sure if that was a defective scooter, if that's how all scooters operate. So that's another thing that we, we should look at, Bird and Lime, is, is the ability to these scooters be locked and not be able to, to pedal with your foot uh, if, they're not, you know, if you're not paying for it. I know that with the bikes that I've used and the others uh, uh, in um, New Orleans, there was uh, one of the, if you didn't return it to a certain area, you would get charged like a $10 fee for not returning the bike to certain areas. So I didn't want to get charged 10 bucks, so I would go out of my way to find, and they're, they're everywhere, the little areas where you can leave them uh, so that it avoids that nuisance as well. Um, so if you have, in the, in the app with the scooters saying, you know, telling users, hey, return it at this corner or this alley or this area and you won't get charged an additional fee, which is, uh, I think it, it helps with people returning them to, and not just leaving them anywhere. And I agree with you. We are looking into that. Actually, the city of Long Beach has designated areas. They paint the sidewalk like scooter, you know, uh, area. So the purpose of the pilot program, again, to better understand how this works, you know, each city is different, and then we can implement, you know, the best, uh, you know, management practices that we can. One last question. Um, the, the slide says that, we, that they won't be able to operate on city-wide bike lanes. Is that accurate, or is that because I'm, I'm thinking if you can't use it on the sidewalk and you can't use it in the bike lanes, no, no. so in the middle of traffic, you know? Yes, they're, they are not supposed to be used on sidewalks. They're supposed to be used in the roadway where, bike, uh, where bicycles are, are riding, so it basically in, in bike lanes. Okay, because yeah. oh, well, your slide says prohibits use on downtown sidewalks and on citywide bike lanes. That, that, that's the existing ordinance, and so that's why oh, we want okay. to initiate a pilot program uh, so that we can work out the uh, permanent ordinance and changes to municipal code. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Now I believe Councilor Solorio. Yes, thank you. Uh, good comments that thus far. I've had the opportunity to speak to representatives from both Bird and Lime. I've also seen uh, some of these here in Santa Ana as well as in San Diego. So I've thought a lot about it and I've asked a lot of people about it. Uh, I'm just going to read through. No response necessary, but I wanted to share my, my, my feedback now. First, I do think that the pilot program is a good way to test it, see what 
consumer experience is like, seeing what the impacts on the city are. Uh, but I do think there are particular things we need to look for. Uh, and maybe that even during this pilot period, we could revisit with them a little bit. Um, number one, uh, I think revenue coming in for them to be able to offer this in our city, I think we're getting fees of approximately 1200 per, you know, and that's 1200 and. $20, which isn't very much, pretty much just you standing here before us. Late in the evening, you kind of have already spent through that. Um, we may need to look at reimbursement items. For example, you know, we're impounding them, or they're being cut up, or we're having to pick them up from the middle of, the, of a street. Maybe it gets dumped into a creek, and we need to figure out ways to recoup our costs for things like that, or impounds. Uh, I know City Attorney uh, uh, Carvalho and I have also in the past thought about and worked on regulatory fees. I mean, developing this program, looking at best practices, there's a real cost to that. And as a city, you know, it's entirely in our right to have a fee-for-service uh, type of program or a regulatory fee to address some of these issues. And that includes liability. I mean, even though the companies may say, you know, we're going to support you on liability, Guess what? Anybody that might get hurt somehow, they know the city has deep pockets. We're going to get sued anyway. And irregardless of whether maybe somebody reimburses at the back end, on the front end, it's our time, our consultants, our attorneys. And at the end of the day, we never really get recouped you know, in, in its entirety. So we, we need to look at that. Uh, also, let's continue to see what other cities are doing in terms of best practices. Uh, during the pilot period or post, if it makes sense to continue. Part of that best practice also needs to be, I know in other communities, uh, the companies have supported the cities with pretty substantial marketing and education budgets. I think, for example, in the city of Santa Monica, uh, I think it was like a million dollar plus uh, donation that one of the companies made for education, outreach, and other things. And so... I would hope that the companies, uh, and I know that maybe they both have reps here, uh, I would like them to offer us what they've offered other cities. Um, and I also thought about you know light rail and our train station, and at first I thought, well, maybe it competes, but there's the benefit side of, you know, the tricky thing in the transportation world with transit is the last mile, right? So you, you, know, you get off from Metrolink, you know, in Santa Ana, and so how do you get to the downtown, or how do you get down Grand, or whatever? Well, this may be a last mile option, uh, that on the whole, it may be helpful. Um, also, as we look at, if we do recommend continuing beyond the pilot period program, I think in areas that are more touristy, it might make more sense, they're willing to pay, it's easier to watch, smaller area, um, easier to monitor. Maybe there are some sections where this is allowed, maybe some where it's not allowed. Uh, and just the way that we've done with grocery carts at grocery stores, I think the companies do have uh, the technology to, when it goes beyond certain limits, that the keys lock, I mean the, 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 the wheels lock, and so please look at um, jurisdictions as well. And with that, uh, you know, again, I was just wanting to share some of my thoughts yeah. and, and concerns and then also asking the companies to treat us fairly. Uh, but I am supportive of this approach of a pilot program. And after that, we may realize that there are more negatives than positives. So I don't want the two companies to think that just because we're doing this yes. pilot program that you're going to be, you know, good to operate here for, forever. So uh, yeah. thank you all. If I may, I'll be glad to address some of the comments that you made. For example, the municipal code already allows us to charge a fine of $100 per incident, and we have done it already with the scooters that were not uh, authorized to operate within Santa Ana. Uh, as far as, you know, the light rail, you, you know, I think these two modes of transportation complement each other, and it will help, see, you know, people move uh, mobility into different areas. Uh, some cities do collect a fee from like the, the $1 unlocking fee, I think they get a percentage, 25 cents or 50 cents. And then every mile or every minute, they get a percentage of the income. So we'll be looking into that also in yeah, the future. Yeah, and that's the best practice yes, I talked yes. about. Let's, let's and I believe there are uh, two representatives here from Lyman. Yeah, and so Bird, it'd be good maybe to hear from yeah. them. Hear from them? Thank you so much. Sure, thank you. 
Okay, I think we have um, one more question. Quest one last question. Um, Councilor Sarmiento. Thank you. Um, so I am excited, right, because I think any time you can have some new element of um, public mobility, whether it's micro, whether it's, you know, on a macro level, you have um, the streetcar, you have Metrolink, you have the, the scooters, you have a lot of different ways to move around, and that means people are visiting the town and, and, and getting to know the town uh, easier. So, and, and this is maybe more a, a, a question for our city attorney, but my, my thought is, is I know we have a hold harmless clause in there, and that's something that's to be expected. But to the extent we move beyond this and we, um, you know, we, we enter into a contract with one or both vendors, um, you know, my concern is with our sidewalks. You know, we have a very um, older grid city with a very narrow um, apron on our, um, on our sidewalks. So to the extent that there are any ADA challenges to access, um, who does that run to? I know we'll be named automatically as the underlying city, but um, is it, you know, and I would just say this is maybe more preemptive to the extent we do enter into a contract that that issue is addressed because some aprons are just much wider than others and for the most part in the downtown it's very narrow and so I don't know if a wheelchair somebody who's disabled is able to get through and I just don't want us to kind of welcome challenges and litigation when we understand we have a much older city and so you know I would say just keep that on the on the horizon or if we've already thought about it then that's great but um, you know I know older cities have that problem and so that's what I'm a little worried about yeah your, your point is well taken and I believe the city attorney looked at the language we've Sonia. drafted the language so and, and especially if this pilot program works long term and we can do some type of regulatory fee I think council member Solario referenced that may be one way to raise some revenue to offset some of the cost we're going to incur but this would be a defend and hold harmless agreement as far as I'm concerned as we move forward so it would be that if we were sued we right, would but, tender we, but I defense. mean, an ADA suit would come right. to us as well. So that's not really something that the vendor. I mean, we're doing this with the notice that we have a very narrow. Um, and I think the long-term um, goal and issue would be that we would not allow the long the operation of these um, scooters on our sidewalks. Um, that they would be just like other motorized vehicles that are operating in the right of way and not directly in the in those areas. But that's part of this pilot program. Yeah. But I think out. it's where they're being placed. They're right? placed. They're placed. So, and I think your issue is that are they going to be placed in areas right, that are going to impede the traffic? Access. So that's what and, I've seen yes. as I as I've traveled because they're already being placed in certain areas where I've seen some difficulty with people maneuvering with um, strollers. I hear. And so if the strollers have a narrower uh, you know, uh, they're narrower than wheelchairs. Then, if they're having challenges, and you know, just something you know for us. Look, I, I don't want to damn. I understand your issue now. The, the aspect, and I think that we'll need to. We have power that. poles that also make it even narrower. Yes. So you know, just to make sure they're not placed in areas that we're going to have you know um, access or public right of way um, obstructed. So just something for you to think about. Last question, Fwad. How how are both um, vendors going to be um, evaluated if they're both going to be? part of the pilot program? Well, we are allowing each vendor to provide up to 500 scooters. We will have access to their data and information. And uh, to be honest with you, like, you know, because we haven't started the program yet, I don't know exactly, but we're going to look at the data, evaluate it, and make decisions accordingly later. We'll learn as we go. We'll make yes. it work. Yes. Thank you, Fahad. Thank you. I'll move the other. Thank you. Well, before that, we've got more questions still. Well, my Councilor for, uh, staff. Villegas. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So do we have a, um, a plan in place to uh, educate the public regarding this? Uh, I, not the city, but I would like to defer to the two companies. Uh, we have representatives here. Yeah, and if, maybe, if maybe I may, I think this is appropriate. They both want to speak. Okay. Um, Go ahead. Ask other questions, then I'll call the two speakers. Do we have a plan to educate the, the public? That's what I'm asking. They'll tell you the companies here. Yes. Ahead, we, we do have requirements that each of the companies provide some educational outreach programs. That's part of the permit requirements in the pilot program. And as that uh, educational outreach is, uh, moves forward, we can refine it, we can enhance it, we can change it around. 
Another question. How many scooters would you say we have seized right now? 250. <laughs> About 230. Seized? Yes. Yeah. We'll, we'll give them back. I want to bring that up, uh, out to the public. I want them to un understand that. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. Thank you. I've got uh, some comments myself, but first I want to hear from uh, Kendall Gaglio, and I want to you know, uh, let folks know that I had the opportunity to meet with her and staff some time ago when the birds first began to fly into the city. And they've been working, I believe, very productively and aggressively with us. And after you speak, I've got some comments I want to make. But I also want to call afterwards uh, Carla from Lyme, who also, I believe, is here to speak. Please go ahead, Kendall. Go ahead. Thank you, Honorable Mayor and City Council, for having me here tonight. My name is Kendall. I'm with the team at Bird. I grew up here in Orange County, took classes at Santa Ana College, and actually worked for years right here in the Civic Center area. So having this familiarity with the city, it came as no surprise that residents and businesses reached out thinking we'd be a good fit. Uh, and our recent testing did confirm that demand. Since then, and since meeting with staff, we have diligently tried to work with them, supply any information they need, and respond to requests. And we hope this pilot will give us an opportunity to further that relationship. Bird was the first in the world to introduce this transit solution, and we're based right here in Southern California. So staff indicated in its report that they think that this will help the city accomplish a couple of its goals, and I think it can help the city accomplish even more than just a couple. Community safety. There are over 40,000 automobile-related deaths each year in the U.S., and Bird is dedicated to reducing car trips. Also, our recent pilots in other cities have shown us that people prefer scooters to bikes. They go more miles on scooters than bikes, yet half as many injuries are reported and we do do community training on safe use bird was the first to offer free helmets to all of our riders from an economic development standpoint the pilot will create jobs and bird hires local it will also draw visitation you'll be first in the county to offer a pilot with scooters City financial stability is another one of your goals, and BIRD has entered into revenue sharing agreements with cities that are willing to partner with us, so that's definitely an option we're open to. Health, livability, engagement, and sustainability is one of your goals. Nearly 13 million pounds of harmful carbon emissions have been avoided because of BIRD. There will be a reduction of traffic, parking struggles. We offer discounted programs for low-income riders, and we'll also increase the use of your current infrastructure, like your bike lanes. Um, the, you have a lovely new one, the protected bike lane along Bristol, increased ridership, and of course on the OC streetcar once it's complete. So please take the lead in Orange County and approve staff's recommendation of a pilot program. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Now we have a Carla from Lyme. Hi there, Carla Wana, Community Affairs Manager for Lyme. Uh, thank you for your time today. Um, at Lyme, our mission is to transform uh, transportation and communities by providing affordable um, and accessible and convenient modes of transportation that are good for the environment. And we are ready and willing um, to provide this service to residents of Santa Ana. Um, to give you a little bit of context, um, Lyme was founded in June 2017. Since then, we've seen over 26 cumulative rides globally. We're in over 100 markets on five continents. Um, based on user surveys that we've distributed, uh, we've found that about 20 to 30 percent of our riders do uh, start and end their ride near public transit. So this is really showing us that folks are, um, you know, that we're helping solve that first last mile transportation void. Um, our riders tell us that about one third of rides are replacing car rides. And so we really just want to encourage um, Council to um, authorize this pilot program. We have all of our paperwork um, prepared and we're ready to submit it to city staff. We've been working proactively with the community, including downtown Santa Ana. We did a pop up a few months ago. We've uh, kept that relationship going. We, um, once we get the green light, we are already in plan mode to um, have a public education and awareness event here where we can distribute uh, helmets and we can engage with the community further. Um, and we're just looking forward to really being able to provide value to the community here in Santa Ana. Thank you. Uh, before I, I, I believe we had a motion, was, or, or a motion was begun, right, uh, by Council Sarmiento. Is there a second? Okay, we have a second by Solario. Um, if I may, I just want to say a few things before we vote. I think if we work in partnership with these companies, we can get a lot of good information we can find out where there's heavy transit corridors, for example. 
uh, we can find more about if there's areas that they perceive in the city that are unsafe, unsafe for either the scooters or pedestrians. We're going to have more data than we have already as to what the companies are seeing because they're familiar with situations around the world. And, and, and to have them here and their brains and their resources and their knowledge and their ability is going to be a real asset for this community. Also, on the education side, you know, those that, that are unable to afford the, you know, the full ticket item, I know that you have low income programs. I would love to, to make sure that everybody that can avail themselves of the service would, because I think this is really going to enhance, you know, a lot of our system. Remember, 35 percent of all ridership for transit in the county of Orange, and it's a big county of 3 million people, but 35% of all that ridership is here in Santa Ana. Also, I think it's something like 55% of all households or residents don't own a car. They might share a car, they might ride buses, they might do other things, but a lot of folks here do not own a car. This might be what enables them to get a little bit further to a bus route that they need to get to, possibly to a to a, a, a train or just the final mile and get to school or get to their job. And and because I mean I, I think it's amazing what these companies can do. They can slow the the scooters down in certain areas. So if if you have an area that uh, let's say it's a nursery school or something and you don't want people going too fast right in front of it they can literally slow down the miles just based on a, on, a, on a virtual map that they have on the computer. And they can say in this area, like let's say on Ford Street, it's very busy, lots of cars, lots of people. You don't want people going 15 miles an hour. You can slow them down to eight miles an hour. And staff can work with the company and say, look, here's what you, we want you to do in certain areas. Also, all the scooters are picked up every night. So where they're, wherever they're left and people have to take a photo, when they park it, they have to take a picture, they have to send it back to the company, you know, with a, with a GPS location. They pick them all up every night, they service them, they put them back out in the morning. I, I mean, I think it's a tremendous effort, you know, all this work that they do. And then we've got some exciting projects like the OC Streetcar. If we do this well, I think there can be all sorts of folks that are taking the scooter to the streetcar, get on the streetcar, go you know up towards uh, you know MetroLink, and then 30 minutes later they're in Los Angeles. It, it, it becomes like the internet of transportation when there's all these connections and all these things happening that are better than what we've had before, and, and, and we've tried it with bicycles. As a matter of fact, at OCTA we've spent a ton of money failing at bicycles because you know they couldn't get them unlocked they were too big you couldn't put them anywhere when we got to where you were going all of a sudden you know these scooters if done well they can i believe solve a lot of problems and also as we look at greenhouse gases just think about it you're not generating a whole lot of greenhouse gases on an electric scooter First of all, it's little, it's got a small motor. Hopefully you're getting the electricity from something green when we plug them at night to charge them. But the point is that you really, in many cases, you're replacing a car. And a car is a lot bigger, it's got the internal combustion engine if it's not electric. And here, it's a shortcut to get on that electric pathway. And so we can have a greener world, a greener planet. And at times when there's more plastic in the ocean and soon about to surpass fish, we're, we're soon about to have more plastic out in all the world oceans than the total number of fish by weight. That's an awful concept, but it's happening. And I believe that things such as these electric scooters push us in a more environmentally friendly direction because we're reducing those greenhouse gases and the dependency on oil and all the things that come with it. So as we look into the future, I just want to ask the council and the staff and especially the companies Talk to us a lot, especially in the beginning. Look, we're, we're, we're going to have issues. You know, we're the fourth densest city in the country, and, and you're dropping a bunch of scooters in the middle of it. There's going to be a lot of demand, but education is going to be real important, and, and safety is going to be real important, and, 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 and we have to be ready as to how we're going to respond because something might go wrong. I mean, if we were to 
get rid of all cars because we had an accident, we wouldn't have any cars. You know, something might happen. So we have to be very, very careful. We know that there's a lot of pedestrian deaths currently in the city. You know, maybe there's things you can do to assist us with that, with concepts. But, you know, but we do have people at night just crossing down a dark street and they get hit by a vehicle that didn't see them. That happens. Got to make real sure that these scooters, if they're driving them at night, that, you know, they're, 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 they're well lit and the people are very aware because, you know, we want, you know, safety is, is, is of utmost concern. But at the end of the day, you know, the market's going to tell us. You know, people and how they vote with their, you know, their credit card or their cell phone and, and, and how they're using these scooters is going to tell us a lot. And I just hope that you all invest as much as you need to invest to service this community. Because I think it's a community that's going to embrace this. I think, I think you're going to see them, you know, kids picking them up, going over to college. Um, you're, you're going to see folks bringing them down because they're at the transportation center and they want to ride them into downtown to, you know, have a bite to eat or something. And it's a nice day and they jump on a scooter and off they go. And here they come doing more and more and more good things here in the city. So uh, with that, uh, those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Good luck, congratulations, and um, onward and forward. So with that, uh, what's our next item? 65A. I would entertain a motion. So moved. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Next item, I'm going to turn temporarily over to our Mayor Pro Tem. I think it's 65B. I'll be right back. Madam Clerk. Mayor Pro Tem Viegas, this is um, the schedule, the City Council meeting schedule for 2019. At a minimum, um, you will need to cancel the, July, the January 1st um, meeting, which will be New Year's Day. Um, traditionally, the council, council has also canceled a meeting in the summer months, either July or August. So that's at, um, at your discretion whether you would like to cancel a meeting now or have that discussion later in the year. What is the uh, pleasure of the council? Are there any questions? We're not going to be together on January 1st. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> We're not going to start the new year off together? Is there any recommendations for the uh, July or August? Uh, council Member uh, Sarmiento? Any, what, what's, what's been our preference in the past, Madam Clerk? You know, it really varies. Some election years, um, they cancel in July, sometimes in August. It, it's varied. Um, so it's either July or, or the August months. Um, September might also m make sense because it's ripe um, Labor Day, and a lot of um, the, school, the children, actually, they start um, sooner in August. This past um, year was August, correct? It was August, yes. I would say we stick with that same pattern since that worked well, unless there's um, you know, a difference of opinion. So maybe that. But would that maybe, be the first meeting in August, um, yeah, August 6th? I'd say so. Okay. August 6th. We'll include that in the minutes. Is there any other uh, comments from the uh, council? Any other comments from the council members? No? Okay, so motion to approve. So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. We're going to move on to the next item, which is 65C, uh, the appointment of the regional boards. And I believe the uh, mayor wants to be here for that, so we can get the uh, mayor out here. You can take a break. We can either recess or you can um, recess open for five the public minutes. hearing. Sure. Five minute recess. Okay. All right, we'll, we'll do that. Sixty-five C. Okay. Um, let me just, uh, Madam Clerk, may I just take this one item by item because we have quite a few. Okay. So I know that there's been interest, I believe, by Councilmember Solario for the Metropolitan Water District Board. 
And I accept your nomination, Mr. Mayor. That's my nomination a second. second. You know where it is. I know where it is. It's in downtown L.A. And you know that they meet long hours. They talk about water, so I'm... I'm and you're there. one of 40 people. <laughs> I was there last week. It's a beautiful... And they rarely do anything. Well, they get you our water. Yes. All right. They get us a lot of water. So, look, God bless you for wanting to do that. Well, the councilman's going to change that, so... I, right. They're going to do a lot more now. They're going to do a lot more. He'll change uh, the uh, composition of that, uh, of that board. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? It's unanimous, Councilmember Solario. Good luck to you. So you'll be reporting on a monthly basis? As needed. As needed. Smart man. <laughs> Smart man. Um, Newport Bay Watershed Executive Committee. Does any council member want that position? We defer that one to staff. And we do, and they, Fuad they, they is currently on job. there. Yes, yes. We could, we could leave him there. Fuad, are you willing to continue to serve? I am. He is. Let's, uh, I'd entertain a motion on behalf of Fuad. So moved. Second. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Um, Orange County Sanitation District. For, for this side of Mr. Mayor, I know uh, in, in the past, Council Member Reyna used to serve on the Orange County Water District, but we have uh, Council Member Sarmiento who has been serving in, in, in that capacity. I'd like to recommend uh, Council Member Reyna as the... Uh, as the representative, and I guess we could discuss who the alternate might be. All right. So if, uh, if you want to make a different nomination, which one goes first? You, if there's a nomination and a second, if there's a substitute, then the substitute would go first. If not, we can just vote on the one on the table. So that was a motion by Councilman yes. Slory. So I'll second the motion for Got it. Okay. Question right here. We, Please. We have um, alternate and a rep, and I've seen in the past it was um, both um, uh, council members, Salty and Harrow was a rep, and David Benavides was the alternate. Would that be something that would be considered if there could be two of us? Yes, there could. Um, if you want possibly a friendly amendment, um, you could amend it if the maker of motion accepts it that you would be the alternate because i know you're interested in on this as well yeah, if you'd like to be an alternate yeah, all right so let's amendment. nominate ceci iglesias is the, the alternate no no let the maker of the motion amend it that way just one motion and the second agrees second degrees all right so madam clerk are you clear okay those in favor please say aye aye aye, aye. aye those opposed motion carries so congratulations to both of you just communicate whenever the rep can't go we got to make sure the alternate is known early so that uh, she can represent us well. Absolutely. Okay, now uh, Orange County Council of Governments, uh, Board of Directors. It's actually the vector control. Pardon? The vector, vector control. Okay, vector control. Yeah, sorry, vector control. Go ahead. Who do we have for vector control? I thought my understanding was Ceci was, was there to 2020. So yes, why is it on here then? It's just a listing of the representatives. All right, so let's leave her alone then. Okay. Let's leave her alone. Sure. Yeah, we can revisit in the future. We can revisit her. If we get too many mosquitoes, we'll, we'll put her back on. <laughs> um, Orange County Council of Governments. That's uh, it's a form of locals, yes, gag. And we can have an alternative, an alternate and a representative. Who's interested in that? So, Mayor, the representative is the SCAG representative, would also be the OCOG representative, and the alternate would come in and substitute as needed. Um, so you'd basically be an alternate for two? Right. And a, and a representative for two. Who wants, this is a lot of time. If Council Member um, Iglesias is interested. Uh, and this would complement SCAG? Yes. Correct. Okay. okay, I make the nomination for Council Member Iglesias. And who's the, uh, rep who's the alternate? That's Maybe a, that's one. A, that's a tough one. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be the alternate. You'll be the alternate. Okay. So we have uh, uh, the council member Iglesias is the representative. Council Solario is the alternate. When he's not at the water board in Los Angeles, he can come and serve well, as your alternate. They're both in L.A., so I can go from one to another. So you'll just stay in L.A. that day, and the city will have to pay for the hotel. No, you have to drive back, Jose. No, I'll, I'll drive back. Got to drive back. 
Yeah. Do you have scooters with really long ranges? <laughs> They're gone, Jose. You'll have to get on the train. But uh, those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Now, Orange County Fire Authority, the Honorable Juan Villegas has been our representative. I'll, nom I'll nominate uh, the council member, or the mayor pro tem. The I'll mayor pro tem. Second. Yeah, motion a second. Any opposition? Those in favor, please say aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank Congratulations. You. Now, the uh, Orange County Water District. I know Councilman Sarmiento is tired of it and he wants to get off. He's about to become chairman. When that's but, the case, um, I'd like to nominate him to stay there. So no, we, we have to keep punishment. him there. We've got to keep I him there. A, a motion to approve. Second. All right, you have four seconds, council member. Take your pick. <laughs> that's good. Pick, pick whichever one you want. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye those opposed. Motion carries unanimously. Um, the uh, Santa Ana Orange TSIA, um, as needed. Who is interested in those? You know, Mr. Mayor, th th these relate a little bit, uh, what, well, substantially with uh, TCA appointments. I'd like to nominate Council Member Pinalosa as the representative, but there's an alternate spot as well, so if anyone is, else is interested. I'll second that. Do you want to be the alternate? Sure. Yeah. Okay. It's a good committee. Yeah. It's a good committee. You, you talk about transportation and you stuff. You about and transportation like Mayor Polito and I, OCTA. No, you, you talk about how bad OCTA is because they control the whole rest of the county <laughs> and how the, the, the transportation corridor agencies just have the corridors. Toll road fights. But, yeah, but you talk to a lot of folks and it's fun. So that's different from the transportation corridor agency, right? They're related, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, but we're, we're appointing to both right now. Oh. You're going to be on both, so you'll know a lot <laughs> about the corridors. Okay and the tolls and where they go and how much money we pay into them and why and all that stuff. That sounds fun. All right. And the meetings in Riverside. <laughs> oh, meetings are in Riverside. Jose can be alternate. No, no, Roman's already <laughs> taken that. So with that, those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion carries. Are we, all, are we done, Madam Clerk? All right. Good job, everybody. We made it. No food fight. We got it done. Everybody's on something. How about the one for Skag? Yeah, on Skag, uh, that was... Yeah, related like to the other items, they're, they're consistent appointments, so you're on. It's both the Skag and OCOG, so you're, you're the primary number. But you're on it. If you want to resign, it's too late. I'll be your, your, I'll be your assistant. Okay. Yeah, you can drive together because he'll be up there for the water board. Yes. All right. Next. 75A. All right, let me, uh, this is a public hearing. Let me uh, formally open up the public hearing and I have a speaker, Ryan Reza. If you are here, please come up and uh, make your comment. Please go ahead, sir. Start the clock, Madam Clerk. Good evening, Honorable Mayor, Honorable Council Members. Thank you for letting me speak again this evening. This is a uh, adopt a resolution with the correlations to the adopted miscellaneous fees for development project review fees for fiscal year 2018-2019. Um, the recommendation is to adopt a resolution. The, re the resolution is for the City Council of the City of Santa Ana to modifying the uniform schedule of the miscellaneous fees for development project review fees for the fiscal year. So my question to you guys is, as a business owner and a property owner, anytime you want to do anything, you have to go through the planning department and pay all their fees. So what is it being raised? Is it being raised by the CPI? with the inflation or is it being raised based on whatever the city staff is recommending to you because none of that stuff is laid out here for the audience to see and judge by themselves we don't know how you guys are adopting and recommending it is it based on inflation mrs attorney or is it based on year-over-year uh, -year growth that you're expecting to have more more fees coming in. You do have an annual budget 
and it's based on this stuff, right? So this is why you might be wanting to raise it so you can get a little bit more revenue. My just my question to you, honorable council members, is what is being used to have that increase? Is it a CPI? Is it inflation? Or is it just based on the city staff's recommendation? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I know we can't do a... A, a, a dialogue, a, correct. A, a, let a, me close the public hearing, and now oh, okay, you can... Okay. Let me close the public hearing. I'll bring it back to Councilmember Solario for uh, questions of staff or whomever. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, and not a question, but a, a brief response. Uh, in, the, in the staff report, and there should be a copy outside in the file, there's a staff report documenting uh, an answer to, you, to your question, and it's based on CPI largely for the region. Uh, the staff report is also online, uh, but, but, but that's a very good question. Thank you. Thank you. So with that, um, I would entertain a motion. Yes. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Pardon? Okay, one no vote on item 75A. Um, 75B, this time place for a public hearing on downtown business improvement district assessment. And Madam City Attorney, I, I think I'm gonna abstain because of the proximity of Ace Muffler to the downtown area. So let me just step outside for a moment. I'll turn it over to our freshly minted Mayor Pro Tem, Juan Villegas. And Madam City Attorney, I think we have an opinion from the FTPC which allows me to participate. Thank you. For the record, I would like to say that Council Member um, Sarmiento does have an opinion from the FPPC that allows him to participate. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Uh, we're at, so we're on 75 here. If Mr. Uh, Ryan Rosa can step forward and start the clock, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Ma um, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, Belegas, and Honorable Council Members. Uh, I wanted to talk to you in regards to this. Uh, 2019 downtown business improvement district assessment based on the strategic plan numbers three and four uh, again my question is you guys have a lot of development going on around here and your downtown is improving steadily with the restaurants and the shops and it's becoming a little bit more balling so are you going to now assess them to make it more difficult for them to conduct business is going to be more expensive is this an annual assessment or is it a one-time assessment and uh, what exactly is the amount of money that you guys are trying to raise for this purpose and how is it going to be better for the city thank you thank you sir is there any other uh, speakers madam clerk i have not received any no other so we're going to close that uh portion and we're going to Move on to council member comments. Is there any comments? Mr. Uh, council member Solorio. Thank you. Uh, I, I know we have uh, various representatives from uh, the downtown, some very able representatives. Uh, maybe if, if one could give a general just status on how this program is going, uh, that would be <coughs> helpful. Maybe Mr. Romo or Raul or Ryan. Or our, or our staff, or our staff, but, but, but it's nice to hear from, the, from our residents as well. We'll provide a unified front. Oh, excellent. Uh, good afternoon, uh, members of the council. Uh, to answer a little bit of uh, Mr. Ryan's uh, question is that we as a business and property owners of the downtown, we uh, assess ourselves to pay for our uh, promotions and uh, activities that we have in the downtown. That's it. Maybe somebody just can address, how is the program going? Do, do, do generally, do, do the business owners feel good about the assessment level and how the dollars are being used and stability? Uh, yes, thank you, Council Member Solorio. Um, this has been an amazing year and the program is going great. Uh, I've been here about five years, and this year we were able to double our budget, uh, also increase uh, the clean and safe contract so that 
there is more uh, safety and, and uh, cleanliness in the downtown. This year has also been really difficult year with the homelessness. I think it hit the highest um, problem for us this year and we really spent a lot of our year reorganizing and focusing on efforts to help alleviate that issue. Um, our events are bigger and better than ever. We're actually having a lunch to celebrate all the event promoters that are utilizing our downtown to activate it from OC Pride to Viva La Vida. And um, it's fantastic. So it's a great time to be downtown. We're really looking forward to 2019 and doing more together. Very good. And just to add to Ryan Smoller's comment, one of the things that we've done to specifically speak to and address the needs of the merchants in downtown is every year Mark Morley sends us everybody who's in the bid. We um, recently completed a what we call the 796 campaign where we went door to door and we talked to all of our merchants. We did surveys with every single one of them. We made sure that they had knowledge of what we do specifically and we also found in those surveys that probably about 11 percent of our downtown needed social media help. From that 11 percent group, it was 90 businesses, we actually were able to set up an internship prep program through the career and technical education at the school where they're helping merchants and we started as a pilot. It's 10 merchants at a time and there we have students working with merchants, helping them to put social media, do their websites and that's actually just taken off just recently. The actual students are there with them and they have them doing even photo like product photography all of that kind of stuff so we're hoping to get through all of that and that was one of the big needs right. you know, of merchants in downtown and, and I just want to say that that's fantastic and I know the uh, Arellano family and others credit you in particular for the increased partnership with the school district particularly the arts program and the Boca de Oro so I thank you for that I think whenever we could focus on business initiatives and and marketing as opposed to politics that that's what works uh, also on what works, I know, uh, you know, Downtown Inc. and the Santa Ana Business Council are working so well together that, you know, it kind of makes sense to merge them again, but then I think, you know, don't fix what isn't broken. Uh, so, you know, if it worked for you now, I think that's fantastic. But on the whole, I'm very pleased uh, with the activities and the partnerships with the school district because the kids come, they bring their parents, they shop, they eat. It's fantastic. Thank you. One of the things, just so you know, is that our group, we have people that speak, the, the Spanish language gap is really important and we do serve, there, we have a large and very distinctive different demographics in our downtown and we want to be able to talk to everyone and we do about 7,000 flyers a week that we go, people go door to door regularly because we want to know what everybody thinks, not only people who can use the computer. So. Madam Clerk, is there going to be a, a vote yes. or is this a... We have not received any protest um, on this item, so you can continue and consider this item. So we're going to continue. We're going to call uh, our mayor back. We actually need a vote. Um, he's abstained on this item, so we would need a, a vote from the balance of the council. Okay, so can I get a motion on the balance? Yeah, if, if, the, if the recommendations are still in order, I'd like to, you know, move the item. Well, I will second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. I'm going to move on to the next item. We can uh, call back our mayor. You, you could begin the item. Just. So we're going to move on to... This is item 80A. It's a joint session of the City Council and Housing Authority, um, which is item 80A. So can I get a motion to uh, re receive and file? We had a motion and a second on that receive and file. Okay, let's entertain a motion on the receive and file. I'll move the item. Second by Councilmember Iglesias. You're good. 
Shall second it. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Now, what item are we on, madam? We're on 85A, and we have one speaker. All right. Mr. Ryan Mayor. Reza. Mr. Mayor, if you don't mind, that this is an item that I, I yeah, it is. Uh, uh My preferred order would be that I make a couple of introductory comments. And then we and take I, comments. And I know Mr. Staff Reza. Uh, would like to make. Uh, All right, Mr. Reza, wait. This is Council yeah. Member Solario's item, so I'm going to defer to him. Go ahead, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, you know, we uh, several days ago had some major and pretty dangerous situations at. Uh, at one of our parks and really on an ongoing basis and so there's been increased interest in having more security cameras be added to all our parks uh, but also in particular uh, not long ago uh, last about a year and a half ago we approved a set of security cameras I think seven or so but of, of the bunch only one has been put in place thus far so I'd, I'd, I'd like a status on that uh, as well as I know PD and parks and the park rangers of the place where it is at Madison, they've had some fairly good results. So if our parks director or somebody from uh, PD can kind of speak to those positive things, that would be helpful. Um, and then this obviously too relates to the lack of park rangers. I know we're working on that, but that means in the meantime, things like security cameras and lighting increasingly important. Uh, and then finally, I know it's been the interest of the public, uh, and I think some in, in PD as well, of extra support for closing restrooms in the evenings, you know, and that may be PD staff or maybe it's, uh, uh, you know, security contract or an extension of the contract we have here with the folks uh, outside. Not that that's part of this item, but these kinds of things are all, all related. Uh, so I thought it would be uh, a, a good time to hear from staff on the status of the security camera program and how we go from here to do the remainder of the initial bunch uh, and then know that I think I and others have an interest in increasing this uh, citywide because we have 50 plus parks but really only one full-time park ranger and so this uh, many of us believe can help. Yes, uh, Council Member Solorio, uh, members of the City Council. Um, in the fiscal year 1617, there was over $402,000 uh, allocated for six security cameras at uh, Jerome, Shepa's Park, Ma um, Madison, Windsor, Memorial, and Santa Anita. And so um, in 1718 budget, $510,000 um, was um, awarded from CDBG funding, Community Development Block Grant funding. And so that gave us a total of over $912,000 to install these cameras. Um, thus far, um, Madison is the only park that has been installed. Um, the Good Police Department, um, has um, sole sourced a contract with Siemens Incorporated and has started the process of installing. And so uh, when they got to uh, Windsor Park, which they're about two thirds of the way done, and by the way, that will be done in about two months. Um, they ran into some problems, but they've got those figured out uh, as far as the placement. Um, we also found out that from HUD, we cannot utilize a sole source contract. It has to be a competitively bid contract. So we're in the process, the police department's in the process of uh, conducting that process, and we anticipate we'll, we will be back to council in the first quarter of the year and asking to approve um, the contract. Um, and. Um, Officer Gaminski, if you can comment on, on the other questions. Yeah. Great. Madison Park, the security camera. Um, I uh, recently saw the park ranger supervisor, and he gave me some positive examples of how it's working. Would you like to speak to that? So Corporal Barragon routinely monitors the video camera from Madison Park. Uh, we have used it on several occasions to perform undercover operations, we'll say, at the park. Uh, we found it to be reliable. The, the link is uh, constantly up. Uh, and just as we talked about when we brought it to the council originally, by utilizing the camera, uh, we're able to retain 
information for evidentiary purposes for later on. Uh, we've also used the video to solve a crime or two uh, that has occurred in and around the bathroom areas, and then we've gone out and and identified individuals involved. So, so the camera's yes, even the cameras solving crimes. That's good. Yes, it's the cameras are working guys. very, very well. Right. How close are they? Because I haven't seen it. I need to go out to, to look at it. How similar is that, that camera to the ones that we have in the downtown that are the tall blue poles? They're all on the code blue towers. The, okay. the, the entire system that was originally set to be put in was all code blue tower uh, based. Fantastic. Those, those are all my questions and comments. Uh, I know my colleagues might have some, and I know there's the gentleman that would like to make a public comment as well. Thank you. Thank you. I do have one. Uh, Go ahead, Councilman Reyna. And, and, and I know the need is huge, and I know we have a lot of parks and a lot of space out there. Uh, just a little curious how you, how you came across those 10 particular sites uh, versus number 11. I mean, what was the criteria of coming up with them? Sounded like a lot of parks that need that help. And, and again, I'm, I'm not saying that we don't need the assistance out there. Uh, but it, it didn't sound like El Salvador Park was involved. It didn't sound like uh, Salgado was involved. Uh, so I'm just curious. Yes, please. <laughs> so, sir, it's my understanding that the original decision on which parks to put these in at was based on which parks had cell phone towers. That was going to be the mechanism in which the, the uh, system was going to be maintained, as well as there had been some money set aside uh, that could be used for initial deployment. But these systems will uh, necessitate an ongoing maintenance, so I believe that's why the decision was made the way it was. Again, just curious. Uh, there's a lot of needs, and we can't hit them all at one time. Yes, sir. Uh, again, I was just curious. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'll be supporting this. Any more questions? Go ahead, Councilor Cecilia Iglesias. I just want to make a comment. Thank you for um, finally addressing this. And I know we've had issues, especially at Windsor Park, with the um, school district in order to put these, um, these cameras. But I'm, what I see is a, a step in the right direction, and I'm very um, thankful to, I call you still officer, but Lieutenant um, Gaminski for uh, uh, keeping, keeping us informed on what's going on. And I'm very happy to see that this is moving forward. So my question to you would be more of a, when would it happen? When are we going to install the cameras at Windsor Park? Because that's the neighborhood where I know that we've been having a lot of conversations. So the cameras are installed. Mm -hmm. The problem is the connection. connection. Okay. Uh, we are having to build a tower based on the difficulties that you addressed. Yes. We believed that we could go one way, understood that we had the ability and the agreement to go one way when that changed. Mm -hmm. So now we've had to come up with a rather large sum of money to now install a tower so that we can transfer that signal from the park to Centennial Park and then back to City Hall. Uh, I believe the money has been identified and I believe the project will be going forward and that connectivity should occur within the next month or two. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so we do have uh, uh, Speaker Ryan come on up again, please. Thank you, Honorable Mayor, Honorable Council Members. My name is Ryan Reza Farsai, and uh, I am a multi-site operator of Arco AMPM in Southern California, and I'm very familiar with security cameras and CCTV and uh, DVRs and whatnot and uh, surveillance. Um, Actually, in the city of Fullerton, the, the detective over there told me that I have the best system in town. And at that time, I had spent some $20,000 and I had two DVRs. Since then, I added a third DVR. So in this particular gas station, which is 27,000 square feet in Maripolito, I have uh, 50, no, actually, 40, 42 cameras, of which... 38 of them are HD cameras. So we're basically covering every inch from the moment you walk in. We can tattoo your ID and zoom into your neck and hand you off to the police department if you make any mistakes on our property. We can zoom into your license plate and so on and so forth. So my main concern is here, Council Member Solario, is that when you install these cameras, which you guys have allocated $970,000 for six more cameras, that's almost 150000 per camera. That's a pretty sizable amount of money. The most important thing is 
who's watching these cameras to see if there's any crimes or anything like that. And uh, from my experience, uh, in the past 20 years of watching this stuff and the, the te technology on it, a uh, police department should also know, is that it's better to actually have a computerized system that's monitoring this stuff. That's what's happening in a lot of the universities around the United States of America. They have these systems. And it's seeing the before the actual crime happens, honorable council members, they are actually alerting the police department or the security security on campus that hey there's something that's going on over here move over there so the same thing that's my question to you guys you're installing these cameras at this parks but it needs to have an overlay surveillance system that's embedded so some sort of software to be able to see what's going on because just to have a camera there and spend one hundred fifty thousand dollars is useless unless someone's actually surveilling it. And to pay someone a contract to watch it is not the same as actually having a computerized system. This is very sophisticated stuff. They're, they're covering campuses that are uh, much bigger than any of your parks. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. So Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor believe, just to ahead. close this out, because there really isn't a, a specific recommendation other than to just give staff direction and support. I think. Uh, uh, Steph's heard quite a bit of support for these uh, cameras, and I think when we approved the initial uh, six, they were based off of technology in the area or safety uh, concerns, but I think uh, now that these cameras are out there, what we know they work, we want to make sure that throughout all the wards that we have uh, uh, s s some equity there just so that everybody can, can, can experience these. So moving forward, uh, you know, look forward to working with my colleagues and staff on ensuring that we deploy these uh, uh, citywide. Thank you. So with that, um, I believe we have, do we have a motion on this, Madam City uh, Clerk? Just direction. Just direction. So we don't need to take any vote. All right. So with that, item 85B, Councilor Sarmiento and Mayor Pro Tem Villegas. Thank you. Uh, and I, and I had a chance to speak with our uh, city attorney um, uh, a few minutes ago, so I think there may be a sample resolution that we could bring back to the council. This is simply to recommend that we uh, consider a resolution um, prepared by staff uh, for us on the um, recent effort to reinterpret and uh, renegotiate a bilateral agreement entered into in 2008, I believe, between the U.S. government and um, the government of Vietnam regarding the Vietnam War refugees and the repatriation, the possible repatriation of them. So what, um, what compelled uh, me to put this on, this on the agenda for us to consider tonight, and, uh, and I'm uh, happy to have Mayor Pro Tem Villegas joining me on this, is that uh, there's an agreement that was entered into regarding the Vietnam War refugees that basically was interpreted by administrations past to say that any um, uh, refugees from Vietnam that arrived here prior to uh, 1995, specifically July 12, 1995, um, they were protected under this agreement. Anybody arriving thereafter, post uh, July 12, 1995, subject to, sa to the same immigration code. And it's actually, uh, there's actually a provision in the agreement, Article 2, which talks about removable persons and conditions of acceptance, which gives you criteria for, um, for potential repatriation. The concern is, is that I know that there's been some announcements and there's been some fear in, um, in the Vietnamese community, which we have many residents residing within um, Santa Ana, and this was to make sure that they understood what their rights were. Um, our uh, efforts in the past to make sure that uh, communities that were um, fearful, um, immigrant communities, uh, were um, supported by their local government to the extent that this is a this is a uh, federal issue, we certainly can't interfere with what um, the federal government does. That's why, as a resolution, this is more of an intent to um, to support the families of many of our Vietnamese refugees whose uh, uh, parents fought alongside our troops during the Vietnam War, and so many of them now are fearful that if they're subject to repatriation, they're going back to a hostile regime where they could be persecuted. So that's where the real fear is. Um, so to the extent that we can bring this back as a resolution that clarifies 
and I understand that um, even the administration is going to go back and look at its interpretation of this, and it might be a moot point by the time this comes back to us, but uh, to the extent, Madam City Attorney, you can bring this back to us for consideration, that would be the, uh, the recommendation from, from my point of view. Just go a ahead. Point of clarification. A point of clarification. So this would be more of a, okay, so we have the resolution, we'll put it on, I guess, you know, when it comes back. Then we'll vote on the language, whatever um, is concluded. But I'm wondering how we had conversations already with our um, congressmen, because like you were saying, this is an opportunity. I mean, we can't really interfere with federal law. But um, have we, as a city or the city um, leadership, have we talked to our congressman, Lou Correa, to see, you know, that we show our support for these families, and if you know this resolution is really needed, or what is it that we can give him so he can. So he can show support that from our community that we want the best things done for our for our families. And that's a great point. If I could answer, um, uh, go ahead on on the intent of what was. Hopefully, this will invite that conversation from our not only our our congressman but any other part of the congressional delegation that wants to opine on this. This is more like in the law considered like a, an amicus brief or something like a friendly um, uh, you know, resolution that gives them direction of where we stand because we have a lot of our residents who are concerned so to the extent we can clarify it with the help of our congressional delegation that would be the the, the ideal right to make sure that they they were able to comment but we wouldn't take a position until obviously hopefully we reach out and so i think that's a great suggestion if we could reach out to our congress our our congressman specifically uh, correa that um can help us and maybe he has some insight of where we are but Again, we wanted to be responsive to, um, you know, to the communities, and I know I've uh, I've received a lot of contacts and communication from our Vietnamese residents that are very, very uh, worried and just unclear, and some of them are just confused. So. All right, thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to thank uh, Councilmember Sarmiento for bringing this item forward, and we do care very much about all of our communities here and the Vietnamese community. Well, this is uh, an issue that's coming up, so. We want them to know that we stand with them. And uh, I know the language here, which says 85B, about condemning the Trump administration, uh, that, um, uh, you know, that was something that the council member had put on there. I added my name, but, you know, I don't, uh, personally, I don't uh, use the word, you know, against anyone. But uh, we just want clarification. I know that this um, issue is being renegotiated. It's going to expire next month. But they're going to, uh, they're working on, on redoing it. So we want some clarity on this because um, we want what's fair for uh, all of our communities. And so thank you again, uh, Councilman uh, Sarmiento. That is all, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. All right. Uh, so uh, this is just direction then. Uh, we don't need to. Staff's going to come back with the resolution. Vote. So just direction. Before we move on, Alan, we want to speak on this. Alan, why don't you come on down? But, but, on, the, but on this side, and we may need to take a vote, but uh, up, up to the author. First of all, uh, thank you, uh, Vince and, and Juan, for bringing this to attention. Uh, I was the former executive director of the United Cambodian Community and uh, part of the refugee movement. Uh, in the early beginning. I was on the first committee in Orange County uh, that was trying to resettle refugees. And um, in, in the chaos after the fall of Saigon and the uh, end of the Vietnam War, you had all the people that helped the, the United States fight the war. And they ended up uh, needing a place to go to be safe. So it was uh, President Gerald Ford who said that you know, it's the right thing to do. You know, they fought for us. We need to do something for them. And um, with that respect, um, there's about 12 congressmen to sign on the letter. Uh, Judy Chu, Lou is one of them. Uh, the entire delegation of the new elected congressional uh, delegation of Orange County, they sign on the letter to President Trump. It was a condemnation. It was a protest. Uh, this last Saturday, I woke up at 9 o'clock before the Artesia Plar event and joined 500 uh, family led by our youth in, in, in Little Saigon to protest this. Why? Because we are nation builders. We're not criminals. We're not drug addicts. 
some of the people that are affected are being um, taken care of legally through the uh, Asian American Advancing Justice and, and the Asian Law Forum and other groups, which have to fight this constitutionally, okay, for those people being deported because they committed a crime in the past, but they led exemplary life, they paid their debt to society, they're moving forward, they're part of America, and there is no place to deport them because their country does not exist anymore. And that's at the issue of why condemnation is not too strong. Because this was intentionally done to hurt a committee, to make a political point. Okay, Why is it falling on your shoulder here? Because it's falling on deaf ear at the federal level. We, politically, we are moving forward there as communities across the country, as refugee Asian and Vietnamese and Cambodian Laotian group. But locally, no one understands what is happening here, but you guys are on the front line of what is happening to people in this community. Merchants, children going to school. I saw a grandfather bring his granddaughter and talk about his horrible experience coming across the ocean and then languishing for 10 years in a camp. And he was explaining to his daughter, I'm here today, I'm bringing you here so that you can understand the pain that we suffer so you don't have to do this. You don't have to have this so that you can fulfill, see the American promise and the dream. Alan, if you can wrap up, please. Came to America to do. Okay, so there is a, a, a promise that America made. They should keep that promise. Thank you. M Mr. Mr. Mayor, I yes, go ahead. want to say uh, w one more thing, because uh, I think I've heard a little bit of conflicting opinions up, up, up here. Uh, so, so this says direct staff to essentially write a resolution condemning the Trump administration announcement to pursue the deportation of thousands of Vietnamese refugees that fled to the United States in the aftermath of the Vietnam, Vietnam War. There are a lot of frustrated and upset folks in our community and throughout California and this country. Um, I do think we need to use strong language to send the message. Um, just for the newer council members, uh, us, uh, I, I was going to call him Senator Correa. Congressmember Correa is very aggressive on these issues. He wants all the support and is aggressive of support on immigration uh, items that are detrimental to any of our communities uh, uh, in, in, in Central Orange County. So I do hope that we still have uh, an, an aggressive resolution, not just, you know, dear Mr. President, can you clarify what you mean? So, because I think I heard some comments about just asking for clarification. I think we need to find that middle ground just so we make a, a, a strong point, but I'm very supportive of, uh, of the general intent. Thank you. Thank you. So what I would Go say ahead. is just, um, you know, to the extent that we can incorporate the council members' um, request to reach out to uh, our congressional representative, uh, Correa, I'll make sure to do that and make sure, uh, you know, he's aware and we, we take his opinion into account as we draft this. Madam City Attorney, when you draft it, obviously it's going to come back to us if there's ways that um, it needs to be, you know, wordsmithed or changed. We certainly will. This isn't the final, um, you know, this isn't the final word. I do feel that um, we want to be as supportive as we can. I think, Alan, to your point, the comments I received were from people who were grown adults who were um, crying. I mean, you know, so that was really difficult those were difficult calls to take um, and, you know, nightmares and just, you know, uh, that, that entire spectrum of, re of reaction. So to the extent that you bring something back that if we have to modify, again, to the Mayor Pro Tem's point, maybe it's a mood issue, maybe it's resolved and the administration reevaluates its position on the um, interpretation of the agreement. That may be uh, the case if it comes and back. And I can give you just some sample language from the resolution that was presented at the state legislature um, on the 14th of December on this issue, um, and it, sa it begins by saying, um, you know, whereas this measure would, would urge the President of the United States to stop any efforts to reinterpret or renegotiate the 2008 United States of Vietnam Repatriation Agreement and would state that the legislature stands in solidarity with the Vietnamese refugees, and there's a series <laughs> of whereas recitals in there. So if that is kind of the tone you'd like me to set, uh, well, why don't you send tone? it to us, and I'm sure okay. we could you know, yeah. work it. So we'll prepare a draft. Stuff. You'll be able to um, discuss it um, before your next <laughs> council meeting and um, adopt it if you like it. And we'll bring in the congressman as well. So I'll move the item if we need. Is a there a second? second? Those in favor, please say aye. Aye. I dispose. Motion carries. Now I'm going to direct our attention to the Housing Authority minutes. That was no no's. Was no no's. Okay, thank you.
Now we're going to uh, all yeses. Now uh, I would entertain a motion on uh, item one for the housing authority meet, uh, minutes. Thank you. Is there, is there a second? Second. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 This closed motion carries. Now the business calendar is a joint session of the city council and the housing authority agency. No, I, I don't know three is already considered. We have one speaker. Monica Mejia, come on down, please. Good evening, Mayor, Mayor Pro Tem, and Council Members. My name is Monica Mejia, and I'm with Link Housing. Link Housing is a nonprofit. We develop affordable housing throughout the state of California. Um, I'm here to request your uh, approval of an action to help us refinance the City Gardens Apartments. Um, and this is to uh, get us a loan that's going to be a 35-year loan uh, that's going to help uh, preserve the affordability of the building long term. Right now, the restrictions on this building last through 2061. And it's our mission to uh, develop and preserve affordable housing for as long as possible to serve all kinds of uh, folks in need low-income homeless families seniors veterans all folks thank you so much for your consideration thank you so with that um, I would entertain a motion on the uh, to approve the amended and restated bond regulatory agreement for uh, city garden apartments second those in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye those opposed motion carries now we're going to adjourn the Housing Authority meeting, reconvene the City Council meeting, and go to uh, City Manager comments. We actually have some speakers on non-agendized items. All right. Well, if you don't hurry up, we'll be done with a meeting. Here we go. Uh, Brad Fieldhouse, please. Followed by, we haven't heard this guy yet, Ryan Reza, and then Dale. Go ahead. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. My name is Brad Fieldhouse. I'm the Executive Director of a nonprofit here in Orange County called CityNet. We are a homeless outreach organization that uh, works in almost two thirds of the cities in Orange County in some capacity. I'm here to make an announcement for January. Uh, every other year in Orange County, we take part in a really important activity called the Homeless Point in Time Count. So I'm here to sort of invite you, give you an advance notice on January 23rd. Um, we are going to be going out countywide, and it's actually a two-day, Wednesday the 23rd and Thursday the 24th. We'll be going out um, across the county and interviewing homeless individuals to provide sort of demographic data, make sure they know that we're not, not paying attention to folks in cities all across Orange County. I know S Santa Ana is also very engaged in this cause. So I want to extend an invitation for you to join us, to come out with us. Uh, some of the things that we're doing this year, we're, we're new to this. We do homeless censuses in all the cities in which we work. Um, this year it's a little bit different in terms of our methodology. We're actually going into every city this year. We'll have teams in every city on Wednesday and sometimes uh, carrying over into Thursday as well. Uh, we're going to be doing all the interviews on GPS technology where we'll be interviewing folks on our cell phones. And we're actually going out in the morning and in the evenings. So we'll be actually providing pretty good coverage countywide. So I have a flyer here that just has some information. Anybody in the audience or is watching on TV can Go sign up for uh, a survey position at everyonecountsoc.org. So can I pass these out or leave some in the back? Certainly. Slide? Just give them to the clerk and she'll take care of it. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. Ryan? Thank you, Honorable Council Members. My name is Ryan Reza Farsai, and I spoke to you uh, earlier this month about uh, double, double ballots in the elections, and I want to give you an update. I did get a follow-up from the Governor Brown of Oregon. Governor Brown of California has never gone back to me again. He's part of the racket of why you're getting double ballots and why your elections is messed up. Governor Brown of Oregon told me to speak to the Inspector of Elections, and I did speak to the legal department. Actually, she left me a message today. She's saying that the states don't work together, so when you go and register in another state, Honorable Council Members, you have to go tell the other state that don't register me anymore, and so this is a way that you don't get double ballots. But double ballots is happening. Now I'm also here to uh, poke some of my corporations. I'm a homeowner, a property owner on... Um, 
in the state of California, a condominium in the city of Newport Beach, and I wanted to poke the Homeowners Association of Belcourt Master, Belcourt Park, their attorneys Igor, Weinkel, Bonkowski, and uh, Weil and Birding, and management companies Power Stone in Irvine and Progressive down in uh, Mission Viejo. I wanted to let you know that you guys have committed fraud by working in collusion to hide the theft of a, an easement, which is a sidewalk that is missing in Belcourt Park. You also committed grand theft in the amount of $120,000 on October 2nd, 2018. David Wenkel, you have performed a false proof of service. I am not six, no, I'm not five foot nine. I'm not 180 pounds. So you just, this is what lawyers do. They do procedures, but they like to play games and they like to play above the law. They're not really there to win the case. They're there to delay, delay, extend, extend, and waste your time. That's what you guys did today with discussing five court cases before our meeting. That's what attorneys do. The police department is also helping them by not properly forcing the law. They've done They've entered my home and done graffiti. The police department says this is a civil matter. Go hire an attorney. <laughs> so again, everyone wants me to feed the state of Israel and feed the attorneys. But I'm here to find a peaceful resolution. I did not break the law. The Homeowners Association Board of Directors did. They need to step down. The lawyer needs to step away from the table now. Thank you very much. God bless America and happy Thank holidays. You. Merry Christmas. Now, um, year. Santa Claus's helper, Dale Helvig, and then Santa Claus after that. I'm just his brother. No, the beard's getting there. Yeah, can't shave until this is done. Uh, Mr. Mayor, new council members, continuing council members. Um, I was asked what my three major concerns were on 2525 uh, residential development. And it's density, compatibility with the surrounding area, and quality of life. Density is still at 80 dwelling units per acre. Over 1,100 people will be occupying that building if it goes in as it designed. And it's twice the size of any project in Santa Ana that is next to a residential development. Uh, and this is supported by the staff uh, report that was given to the Planning Commission and also some information that I've provided to the uh, continuing council members that I'll forward to the new council members that shows the 17 developments that are built next to residential areas. Uh, compatibility with surrounding areas, we're not opposed to the 3,600 plus units that are going to be built in North Santa Ana and right on town and country, which is actually the city of Orange. We are against the six-story complex that's going to go in right next to historical significant community. It's tiered down, yes, but it's still six stories. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, when I say historical significant community, that's right out of the general plan, so uh, it's there. Uh, quality of life, I've heard people talk about the density of downtown Santa Ana, the density that it's a lot lighter in the northern section of Santa Ana, and the developer saying that this is going to help. But the fact is the density is just going to increase in North Santa Ana because the people that are living in the dense part of other areas of Santa Ana aren't going to be able to afford what he's proposing. Uh, to avoid being rent poor, they're going to have to earn anywhere from 52000 to 150000 to afford living in that apartment. So all we're doing is creating another dense area in Santa Ana. And, uh, you know, I know we're number four in density in the state and I guess we're just trying to be number one by continuing to build all these projects. And, and so I hope that uh, we disapprove this project when it comes time. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Santa Claus. Been waiting a long time. Bring the mic down a little bit if you need to. Christmas is coming. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. I just want to wish the, the children and the residents of Santa Ana a very Merry Christmas, Feliz Navidad. 
And I wish some peace and harmony for this city. We had a great year. We had very few homicides in the city this year. It's a great uh, tribute to our police department. But I just want to say this is our 150th anniversary as a great city. So we need, as a council, to roll up your sleeves and get to work. We have 64 neighborhoods in our city. Uh, from the air quality in the Lacey neighborhood, we still have a crematory there. Uh, the poverty in some of our neighborhoods, to the armory and the homeless question at the Del High Center, uh, the junkyards of Artesia Pilar, the railroad tracks of South Maine that is becoming another tent city, the density project of 2525 North Main Street, from Willowick to the streetcar and to the downtown. We have issues of homelessness, housing, gangs, crime, density, parking, and traffic. You have a lot of work ahead of you. There is a lot of heavy lifting. So a little less talk, a little more action, and let's work together so we can build a, a beautiful city in it, on its 150th anniversary. So Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Santa. With that, I'm going to go to city manager's comments. City manager, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just, as we end the year, I just wanted to uh, focus on an article that came out in the Orange County Register recently, and it was titled, In Rapid Fashion, Much Has Changed for Orange County's Homeless Population by David Whiting. And I fo focuses on Orange County in the title, but if you read the article, it really documents a lot of the good work that was started by Santa Ana. And so we have a lot, uh, a lot to be proud of. Uh, we really led the way. Anaheim is apparently going to follow suit with uh, their shelter, with the mural in it as well, in the next few weeks, and uh, hopefully the county will follow suit soon thereafter. Uh, so this was a good year on the homeless front. I just wanted to uh, remind all of us as we go into the holidays that as a result of all of your leadership and great staff work, uh, 150 or so folks are enjoying uh, much better uh, uh, surroundings uh, every evening. And with that, Mr. Mayor, I conclude. Thank you very much. Now let's go to council comments. Councilor Reyna, please. Thank you so very much. <clears throat> Try to keep it brief. Uh, first, Nick, I want to thank you also for being at our TJ uh, Christmas event. Uh, I'm not quite sure if you got a, some proper shout out for being there. Uh, Fremont will be having one this Saturday. Uh, Christmas is coming up and it's a great time for family, friends, and camaraderie and definitely that special moment with your friends. Uh, at the same time, keep in mind that, unfortunately, there are a few people that don't have that extended family that are out there celebrating Christmas or the holidays by themselves. You know, if you have that, 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 that compassion, if you have the ability to invite them into your home to break bread, please remember those individuals that, that, that are going through the holidays by themselves. Uh, definitely key and critical for our mental health, uh, and that success is relying on each, each and every one of us. Uh, so remember how valuable a smile is to another human being. Uh, Christmas is coming up, so make sure you shop in Santa Ana. Shop local, stay in Santa Ana. The more dollars you shop in Santa Ana, the more revenue we can rent without raising any more taxes. So make sure you shop in Santa Ana. I like purple, so if you're going to buy me something, I'll take something mm -hmm. in purple. And Merry Christmas to everybody. So uh, Have a good New Year. Thank you very much. Councilman Vince Sarmiento, please. Thank you, and I also want to dovetail onto what the uh, city manager sa uh, was saying. Um, you know, I was at a luncheon the other day for the Salvation Army where they were recognizing a lot of their volunteers and staff and, and the good work that they do all year long. And their keynote speaker was um, Judge Carter. And uh, the judge made it a point to specifically point out the efforts of St. Anne and went on and on about the good work that's been done here. So to our staff that dedicated so much of their time and effort to um, making that um, site a reality in such a short period of time, I really applaud all your efforts. And I want to thank staff generally for all the work that they've done here in 2018 as we wind down. Um, we, I think there's a really, really good window of time uh, coming up in uh, 2019 for us to make some incredible strides. Um, I think we have a very good team of folks who are dedicated to the city um, and who have a lot of promise. So um, I know many of you are new. Um, all I would say is... Um, you know, your, your learning curve got a little shorter, so we, you know, we're probably going to be putting a lot more on your plate very soon. But, um, you know, hopefully uh, you're, you're up to the challenge. You're going to be serving a great community, and we thank you for everything that you've done and everything you're going to do. Um, and to my colleagues, I want to thank them and their families and uh, wish them, uh, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, uh, enjoy the time off. We'll see each other in the next year, and uh, thank you all. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On uh, last Thursday, I attended the uh, unveiling of Santa Ana's first uh, city-sponsored uh, public art panel, and it was a great event. Thank you, Steve Mendoza. I saw you down there. Uh, thank you for all your help. And Tramley also. I want to thank all the staff. If I don't get any more names out there, I, I uh, appreciate it. Even uh, Relampago del Cielo was there. They did uh, some folkloric dancing. There was music. There was food. And it was a very, very nice event. I also, on Saturday, I attended the Artesia Pilar Neighborhood Association holiday party. And uh, I believe uh, Council Member Reyna was there also. And um, great, great success. A lot of people. It was a good turnout. I was very happy to see that. Uh, and also that afternoon, I was at the Santa Anita Noche de Paz uh, holiday party over at Santa Anita Park. It was great. 7-Eleven was there. They gave out over 300 hot dogs. That's how many people we had. It was great. We had a Santa Claus. We had gifts, face painting. Uh, the police was out. The fire department was out handing out gifts. It was a very, very good event. I want to thank everyone, the PD, OCFA, all the city staff that worked. That There's a lot of work that goes into this. Don't think that we up here do not recognize that. We really appreciate your help, and I wish everyone a happy holiday. Thank you. Now I'm going to go over to Councilor Jose Solorio, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I learned to always prepare. I know you skip over to this side, so uh, uh, unprepared. A uh, few things. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, our public works staff, our city manager's office, and Supervisor Doe's office. Um, uh, Mr. Mayor and I have been working with their office on uh, a fence at Fisher Park uh, to help control some of the fire issues, vandalism issues, et cetera, that are very close to people's uh, homes in that area. Uh, it, the fence is, is, is finally up. It looks really good and it's tall and it's not chain length so it's not easy to, to, to climb and um, it's being well received by, by, by the residents. I need to go do a final inspection to make sure you know they, 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 they did it all but uh, it was about 95 percent complete this past weekend which is uh, fantastic. Uh, I think we're on the whole including the press getting a very good um, reaction to the link. Uh, but, you know, it's the first time that this city operates a facility like that or at least helps fund a facility like that. And so in terms of what our goals are and metrics and enforcement and the humanitarian side of telling our homeless that we have that opportunity, uh, you know, that's going to be an ongoing effort. I know uh, the, the uh, tremendous outreach that was done a week or two, or two ago was very helpful. Uh, I think... Uh, the facility got to the point of being at about 160 or so of the 200 capacity, uh, but then it dipped. I know uh, late last week it was probably like in the low 80s, so it's something that we need to keep w working on so that we can continue to keep our city clean, keep our city safe, uh, offer a place for homeless to stay. Um, I know in speaking with uh, Chief Valentin and, and others, you know, we do recognize we always want some room in there, but that's probably closer to 50 than anything bigger than 50. So it just needs to be an ongoing effort because that's obviously now a big asset with a lot of staff and a lot of people looking at it. So we want to you know, be able to have good, positive metrics uh, at, at the end of the day. So uh, I hope that we can continue to try to stay at that level of having 150 or so. Um, uh, at, at a time. Um, finally, and uh, I know P Peter mentioned it as well, and I mentioned it at a prior council meeting, uh, next year, 2019, is the 150th anniversary of the founding of, of this city. Uh, and, you know, I, I look forward to working with my colleagues. I want to discuss with Mayor Polito maybe a council ad hoc committee so we can work with staff and the community on, on, on activities. Uh, I also have learned since talking about this and uh, some, some, some communications. Uh, the Heritage Museum uh, also is already playing a leadership role in this regard and wants to continue to, to work on this with the city. And uh, the executive director is uh, Kevin Cabrera, who used to be in our city library. He's fantastic. Uh, he's a historian, lo loves the city, cares, and has doing great work. And in fact, working on a very big mural that we think uh, can also uh, go well with its 150th uh, anniversary. So uh, uh, with that, just I uh, also want to wish everybody a happy new year uh, as we enter 2019. Thank you so much. Councilmember Peñalosa, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, again, I just wanted to thank 
uh, city staff for helping me the last couple of weeks get adjusted to this new role. Uh, it's been interesting for me, and, and I wouldn't have been able to do this without you guys, so thank you uh, for the hard work that you guys have, have done and, and the guidance. Uh, this, earlier this month, I was you know, lucky enough to participate in the Wilshire Square uh, Christmas Parade. Uh, very great to see the community come out and have these events and see the community involvement with our neighborhood associations. It's very important, and I'd like to see it, and, and I would like to see more of that uh, across the board from all our neighborhood associations. Uh, thank you to, to Bear Paint uh, at Santa's Corner. They presented a $20,000 check to Teen Space on the 7th of December, and I was there uh, at the Roosevelt Community Center to witness that as well. So, so thank them, and, and Merry Christmas, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy Holidays. I uh, look forward to, to working with all of you and seeing what 2019 brings. Councilmember Iglesias, please. Just want to thank you all, the staff, especially for making this first meeting for me very um, smooth, and for giving me the information when I, you know, when I reached out to you. I feel that this is a um, great start. I want to thank the council members here. I believe that we have a very cohesive group, and I just want to um, reiterate my commitment to serving the the community here in Santa Ana. So whatever I can do to moving that, you know, in that direction. Cohesively, I would, you know, I'm definitely open, open to those conversations. Um, I, you know, I didn't get an opportunity to attend many of the events, but um, I know one event that I got to attend, it was when Chief um, Valentin was serving pancakes. So I just want to thank you for, uh, for being there. That was a, a, a special moment to see a lot of the, the individuals from the community and also the kids just enjoying. And um, seeing you with an apron, it's, yeah. <laughs> it was um, it was very uh, inspiring because we are here to serve, and um, you serving uh, you know serving the community really um, demonstrated how we are connected here in the community in the spirit of serving. And um, also attended the um, I think it was a staff recognition with um, with our city manager. I think it was the police department and the Parks and Rec staff. And it was um, really nice to get to know them, and also just to see the interaction they had with both Councilman Solorio was there, and um, also with the city manager. It's just nice to see, uh, you know, the top leadership um, interacting with our staff. It really shows the staff appreciation. So um, I know that I'm coming from the Santa Ana Unified School District. Um, I guess processes that we have. Do uh, I'm wondering if do we honor on a monthly basis? Do we have um, honored like the employee of the month that would be something that if we don't already have if we could do something here at this okay. council chambers that would be really nice to ask each department to to you know select um, uh, employee of the month and we can honor them here because I think that shows more of appreciation and really recognizes them because it doesn't for us it's kind of like we I can't be everywhere with the staff but you know to hear from their direct management and how well they're doing especially here in the public, it really means a lot. So if that's something that we can look at, I would really appreciate it. And then I have um, two more other things that I would like to ask. Um, I would like to ask the staff um, to look into the process of how we can bring, a, um, bring to this council chamber the motto, In God We Trust. Um, I, I don't know if you guys know, but I used to work for Senator Huff, and I remember going to different cities, and I would see an emblem with the city logo, and also it says, In God We Trust. So I'm wondering if um, staff can see how we can, the process, what's the process of doing that? Because I know just recently Irvine also had it, I think in 2015, and um, so um, I'm asking to see what, what that would look like. Um, and also another thing that I would like to um, see is, um, like um, Council Member Solorio was saying, kind of like a council ad hoc committee to meet with all the um, churches here in Santa Ana, because uh, you know, they've, they've been um, very instrumental in helping us lead this um, city forward. So if that's something that we could do maybe on a quarterly basis, meet with the, with the, you know, the church leaders, you know, it, it, non-denominational, as long as they're church leaders, then could kind of tell us uh, what, you know, what, what's working. Okay, so um, that'd be great. And with that said, um, I just want to wish everyone a Merry Merry Christmas. and. Um, and a happy new year. I don't know if we're going to be seeing you before the new year. And I just want to thank everyone that's here uh, because I know this show's commitment to our community. So thank you all for being here. I want to give a shout out to Mike Gonzalez over there and Helen Martinez. Thank you for being here. 
And uh, so thank you very much all. And again, thank you for making my first meeting very pleasant. Thank you, council member. Uh, let me just take a moment and um, welcome the new council members that have now joined the city council. Um, I think um, you're coming at a very interesting moment in time where I believe next year and the following two years are going to be extremely productive. And I believe if we all work together as a team, we'll get a whole lot more done. Um, and what I, part of what I'd like to do is just get in a car, drive around with one of you at a time, and just look at the city and talk about what we see and what we'd like to see. Yeah, we, we could do it on a scooter, but it, you know, part of it we can, uh, we, we can just drive and we can stop and we can look at things and talk about vision and what we'd like to do. I'd also like to propose that next year um, we think about ad hoc committees, and I've had a couple of you mention projects that they like to work on. And in the past, we've had standing committees, and there's pros and cons to that. But I think if we have a particular effort, a particular project, we can just kind of sort of define it, see who he wants to serve on that committee, set some goals, and go at it. Just rock and roll, you know, as hard as we can go, and 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 where it stops, nobody knows until it's done. If we think the task has been accomplished, open up another ad hoc committee and work on another project and have more fun. So you know we're gonna we're gonna have a lot of fun. I think we've we've uh, come a long way, especially with uh, homeless problem. I know it's still very very serious. We have to do a whole lot of work, um, but there is another shelter being built, and um, and at the same time residents have to get used to calling them PD because it used to be that we wouldn't call the police department because they really couldn't do anything. Well, now there's been several occasions where I've called PD and they've come out right away. They've been able to assess the situation, you know, take uh, people off uh, into the homeless shelter. And from there, you know, some have gone on to get other types of assistance. Some have gone on to assisted living. Um, I think a very important thing is they're costing us less money in a shelter than they are on a street where we're constantly chasing ourselves all the time. Plus, you know, they're not helping themselves, the, the poor homeless people that are out there in the streets, but they're also in many ways, you know, hurting other people who are not homeless, but, you know, who maybe, you know, see property values drop or, 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 or they don't want to go uh, in a store because they feel threatened and or there's, you know, crimes that are occurring. So right now we have to take our destiny in our own hands we have to be aggressive. We have to be positive. We have to realize that we can do something about it and, and, and keep moving forward. And especially in this spirit of Christmas, we have to care about each other. You know, thank God for all the loved ones that we have around us. Not take anything for granted because as strong as life seems and as long as some people live, you just never know. You just never know what could happen. And so don't take anything for granted. Thank God for everything. And also thank him because we live, I think, in a beautiful, beautiful city. But wait and see the next two years. It's even going to get better. And this council is going to make it happen. We're going to together lead the way. So with that, um, have a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, Happy Holidays. And our next meeting will be in January. Good night. <laughs>